begin. Brent, I just heard what you said. That was a lack of what you just said. <coughs> Easy. There we go. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome everyone to the September 11th meeting of the Litchfield Board of Selectmen. And I would like to open the meeting by, uh, before we salute the flag, I'd like to ask everyone to remember uh, all those um, that were lost in the September 11th uh, attacks in 2001. This is, I believe, the 16th anniversary. Um, keep them and your, their families and all public safety personnel who respond every day to keep us safe. Um, keep them in your thoughts, prayers, and hearts. And let's uh, salute the flag, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, the board is just coming out of a paperwork review. Uh, the first item on the agenda is review and approval of the cons items of consent. In that uh, package, we have the August 28, 27, uh, 2017 meeting minutes. Uh, the accounts payable manifest for uh, September 5th of $1,601,866.79, which obviously includes a school warrant. Um, for September 12th of 23,789.68. We have a payroll manifest September 7th of $48,590.43. And uh, September 14th for $48,630.83. Are there any items members would like removed from the consent agenda? Hearing none, I'll accept a motion to so approve. So moved. Moved by Mr. Perry. Second. Seconded by um, Kurt. Mr. Schaefer. <laughs> Mr. Schaefer, sorry. <laughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Are there any other items that members would like added to the agenda? Okay, hearing none, uh, we will move on. Public input. Uh, we're thinking will occur no earlier than 6.30 tonight. Uh, we have budget review and we have a conservation commission presentation and um, under the regular business that's what we will uh, start with the river access update and proposal and we have several members of the committee with us tonight could i ask you to introduce yourselves um, to the members of the public um, all of you that are here for that please so that they know who who you are who is here john mckibben vice chairman conservation commission Pete Salidas. Uh, Jason Brennan, 23 Aldrich Street. Well, 31 Pearson Street. Oh, there you go. John Bryant, 69 Katie and Lane, Recreation Commission. Rich Lascelles, 236 Charles Bancroft Highway. Great. Okay. Thank you very much. And uh, Jason, take it away. Take it away. So we put together a little bit of a presentation. We've got some maps that we handed out. We're going to give you an update on the status of the River Access Committee. I'm going to try to go through this pretty quickly. If you have any questions, let me know. The goal of the River Access Committee was to try to find the most suitable location for a small craft river access in the town of Litchfield. We're talking kayaks and canoes. Uh, the process that we went through to, well, we formed a committee, and the process that we went through to try to find the best piece of property included inventorying just about every single publicly owned piece of property along the Merrimack River. We also inventoried private pieces of property as well that we thought might, might fit the bill. That's step one, is that we inventoried all the pieces of property. We then developed as a committee criteria that we wanted to see in a uh, river access site location. And that included things like gentle slopes, visibility and safety, how many trees do we have to cut down, what do the river conditions look like, topography, how far it was from the road, uh, constructability, things like that. So now we had these two, two things in place. Uh, we actually went through and did site walks. And we walked sites, actually one of the sites was up in Manchester under the bridge and we completed site walks down here in Litchfield and we developed a short list of under a handful of piece of properties, three of which were um, in, the, in the middle of town. As part of that, 
that process, we looked at each one of the shortlisted piece of properties based on the criteria that we set up. If any of you have walked the river, you or have canoed the river, it's quite obvious that in uh, 90, I'm saying 85% of the case, the riverbank slopes are steep. So finding a good piece of property that has a nice, gentle slope to the river is, is somewhat difficult. So we looked at uh, several pieces of property and then based on the uh, feeling of the committee, we found one piece of property at Charles Ban uh, 296 Charles Bancroft Highway. The committee felt that this was the most advantageous site. Uh, this site is owned by the town. It's 13.6 uh, acres and it checked just about every single box on that criteria gentle slopes it's actually got a, a somewhat of a, 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 a access ramp right there right now that's so graded perfectly wouldn't even have to cut a tree down so that's the site that we focused in on of, as part so of the seven through the first two number two was privately owned they're not looking to sell it at this time and then the slope on private one which is the state owned is what did you say like 50 percent it was grade? uh it's got about a 20 to 20. 25 foot embankment right there so it was that was ruled out for for that case if, if one second now joan years ago right when they talk about the state site was that the one they were going to put a, a ladder type path down and you have to carry your a tunnel they were going to make a tunnel on number one the state was and they had it pretty much engineered this was 15 years ago and then they pulled out because of cost uh, most recently, I had somebody down two, two years ago from Fish and Game on site number two, and he didn't like that because they'd have to do, in that river there, you couldn't put a motorboat in, and they were all about motorboat access. So, right. uh, well, I remember site one, that would, they would prohibited that, right? Well, they, they would have? They would have, ha the way they had it engineered was a tunnel through the banking, and it would have been a carry in. Carry in, right. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry, Jason. I just wanted to. We did take a, oh, that's going to come up in a minute, but we did take a look at site number one extensively. We called the State Shoreland Protection Bureau, met with them for over an hour on that piece of property, and they felt that they wouldn't even give us a permit for it just due to the fact that the banks are, are so steep. And so maybe at that point in time, 15 years ago, yeah, we things were a little bit different, and you could, uh, right. you might have had more leeway, put it that way. Thank you. Uh, related to the site, 296 Charles Bancroft Highway, owned by the town, 13.6 acres, about 1,200, 1200 feet of frontage. On the road. On the road, yeah. About 200 feet of frontage on the river. So we then went through a process where we were coming up with conceptual plans. And actually, when we were out doing the site walk, we were kind of brainstorming ourselves right out, right out in the field. And we came, basically came up, ended up with three options. Option number one, which we came up out in, the, out in the field, was to bring a driveway down the middle of the field and down to the river. And the reason why we came up with that idea is because there's actually a farm road already there. And we we're assuming that that farm road is kind of relatively stays that way year round. Uh, we met with the Conservation Commission. They didn't like this idea because it kind of split the field in half. And they asked us to come up with an option that would bring the driveway down the southern property line. And that's what option number two is. And so that would bring a, a, a driveway down the southern property line, kind of hug the property line, bring it fairly close to the river, and there'd be a parking area there for, for like uh, six to 10 cars or so. And so that was the, the, the second option. We then um, met with the folks that are farming the field to hear what their concerns were. So someone is farming this field actively right now, and we met with them to hear what their concerns were. And their, their concerns were notable that they felt that, and I can't speak for them, but they felt that having people down there could cause issues. They didn't want people to be able to get access to the field and drive on it and you know rip up, rip up their plants or even steal vegetables and things like that down there. So we came up with option number three which was, was trying to uh, meet in the middle here, and that would be to bring a driveway down, partway down, and have the parking area partway down, where people like the police department could actually see the cars from the road, and they wouldn't be kind of out of sight, out of mind. The other two options, it would be kind of difficult to see them from the road. And so those three options were on the table for us. We then met as a committee a few weeks ago in August, 
and uh, decided as a group to move ahead with the option number two. And that was to bring the road down the southern property line and bring it as close to the river as possible. Um, the reasoning behind going close down to the river was really related to accessibility, some ADA compliance things, things like that. And people just felt that you shouldn't be carrying canoes down 500 feet down to the river. So we, we focused on that right there. Um, the behind the scenes, we then came up, now that we had the area that we wanted to, or the, the conceptual plan that we wanted to focus on, we decided to come up with a more detailed plan so that we could figure out what the cost would be and, and how much disruption would be. In doing this, putting this plan together, we were trying to make sure that we were low, as low impact as possible and that there was minimal disturbance. We weren't trying to cut any trees. We we're trying to stay away from the farmland as much as possible. So we tucked everything up against the property line. So we're low impact and, and minimal disturbance. And so the plan that you see in front of you is just kind of a, it's more than a cartoon drawing, but it's a drawing that kind of uh, gives, envisions what we anticipate is going to go on here. So what you see on the he up here is the conceptual plan. I'm going to run through a couple attributes related to this plan. Um, number one, we envision having a lockable gate like we have at Dara Pond right up front so it can be shut either at night or certain times of the year. There'll be an entrance sign there uh, uh, allowing you to enter into the location and there'll also be a second sign down here that will have the, the park rules on it. There will be, knock on wood, our goal is to have some sort of fencing down here to try to mitigate people being able to get over into the farm field. So we priced out fencing, either a fence like that, a white vinyl split rail fence, or kind of like an old school Western split rail fence like the farms had, something like that. Going down there, that wouldn't go down the entire way. That would only go down a partial way. And then we might have some trees in there along the, the driveway. And then there would also be like rocks like you have at the Conservation Commission in the northern part of town so cars can't get onto the field. So everybody's kind of boxed in here. There would be um, a gate also potentially right here so a tractor <coughs> could go through, and potentially a gate down here so the fire department could get down there as well. Could go down there with a four-wheel drive pickup truck, and you could actually drop a boat in there based on the, the road that they have right now. And then we also are taking a look at uh, security cameras as well. If we have to go to that, that length, we've already taken a look at security cameras and what it would take to get security cameras down there. So we're taking a look at just about every single angle. In relation to just attributes of the, the, the piece of property itself, we're talking a 20-foot wide gravel driveway that would go down about 525 feet to this location. There would be about a 50 by 75 parking area down there for a certain number of cars. It would either be fenced or we'd have boulders around there. And then there would be a, basically a pathway to the river where people would drag, drag their canoes down there. Um, over here, down by the river, there already is a pathway that's already established. So there really wouldn't be any disturbance to the river whatsoever. This little line right here is a 250 foot shoreland line. Anything that's inside of this line, we might have to get a permit. We talked to the state about that, mm -hmm. and it doesn't seem like that big of a deal because we're really not putting a structure there. We're just putting gravel down. Just a little bit of a look at the land. We're talking about, of the 13.6 acres, that whole area right there, and I even included more than what we're going to be using, is a little more than an acre of the 13.6 acres. So that's it zoomed in. <coughs> That is it at the property level, and then this is it zoomed out to the far level, just so that you can get an idea of how big of an area that we're talking about. Just some miscellaneous factoids, talking 525 feet of driveway. We anticipate, we think that we're gonna use about 30 <coughs> feet of the 1,200 feet of frontage, which is 2.5%. We think that we're gonna use about an acre and a half of the 13.6 acres, which is 11%. 50 by 70 parking area and zero trees really need to be cut. It's a, a piece of cake, really. There's no, no obstructions whatsoever. Just really have to scoop out the loam and put gravel down and we're good to go. We also um, 
looked at a few other things. Rich talked to the fire department about fire department access down there, so we integrated those comments. I don't even want to say they are concerns, comments. Uh, I wasn't aware of this, but I'm sure you folks are, but right now the fire department really doesn't have public access to the river. They have a couple of spots uh, through Wilson Farm and also down by St. Francis, uh, but the, the place on Wilson Farm, uh, there's times of the year that they really can't get down there and the, the uh, place at St. Francis was uh, is very difficult for them to access. So this uh, would, would make it much, obviously it's close to the fire department, plus uh, they should be able to, to get their uh, rescue uh, uh, truck down there as well as the boat. <coughs> We took a look at ADA compliance because everything you build right now uh, has to meet some sort of ADA compliance and um, that wouldn't be too big of a deal. You really just need a three foot wide path that's hard packed really. And we're not constructing a boat ramp. No boat ramp is going to be constructed. We're, it, we're drop in, we're drop, drop in, in. Pull out. we're leaving it as is. Uh, so as we're not constructing anything, we don't have to really worry about that. One thing, one thing if, I, if I could with respect to the ADA. We are going to make this so somebody in a wheelchair could get down to the river. Yep. Uh, looked at state permitting, not too big of a deal. Did deed research on the land to see if there were any covenants on there, none as far as deed covenants are concerned. And then we took a look at construction options. So I want to just make it clear that we vetted every single property 10 ways to Sunday, if that's actually the term that you use. Three ways, five ways, whatever, whatever it is. Ways. A wicked lot. Okay, we vetted every single piece of property. We went back to several pieces of property and reopened discussions with the state to try to uncover every angle. And based on what the, uh, the subcommittee feels is that this, I think, you know, by far was the number one <laughs> piece of property that checked every single box that we had there. Um, I think all of us would have loved to have been able to put it on the state piece of property because it's a little bit more closer to the town, but there's wetlands there in, in there, there's a lot of trees that need to be cut, and there's a, a significant slope there, and there would have to be, uh, it would turn into a pretty major, large project. Major work. Uh, so construction <laughs> options, and maybe, Rich, you get ready for, for this right. one right here. So then we took it a step further and started to figure out uh, how much do we think it would cost to actually do this. And we came up with two options. Number one, which Rich is going to talk about in a second, is using the U.S. Army to support construction of this. And option number two is if we have to have a contractor do it. So, Rich, you want to talk about that? Uh, for those of you that were around in the 80s, uh, the building, the town hall over at Bear Pond, uh, was, uh, uh, in the late 80s, was boarded up. It had been... Uh, uh, burned a couple of times, the roof was leaking, there were two sizable holes in the gym floor. So we uh, got to, uh, a group together, a lot of volunteers, and we decided we'd try to save the building. Uh, we approached the uh, Army Reserve <coughs> and they took a look at it and said this is a great building for us to use for training. And for about, I, and I don't know exactly how much it was, but for about $15,000, I think, just the cost of materials, we were able to save the building. Uh, we also put on, that doesn't count the new roof that went on and the doors, but this happened just before Desert Storm. And it was, it, uh, I always relate this because the guys were, training down there, doing plumbing and electrical and lighting and carpentry. They all had a gas mask on their hip because <laughs> it was part of their training. And they were deployed uh, then in January. So we approached the Army and we said, well, you know, it's worth a try. Why don't we do it again? And we got a hold of some people and Pete and I went to a meeting uh, of uh, the Army Reserve and reserve, and uh, they were delighted. They came <coughs> here. They came to Litchfield. All three of them have never been to Litchfield yeah. before. Yeah. And they're right up at the airport. But uh, 
they were delighted. They said they, you know, they have people come in on weekends, they sit at computers and do simulations. We talked about what we were going to do and no ledge, no rocks, you know, just basically getting the topsoil out and putting the, uh, putting the gravel down and putting the rocks and the fencing and electrical, whatever. And they were delighted. So uh, the reason that we're approaching you tonight is that we're, it's not a real easy task to get this. There's a lot of hoops you got to jump through. We're talking about construction after the mud season, so we're talking May of next year. Well, we have to have the request in fairly shortly, so we're, we're asking you for approval to do that. But basically, all it would cost if we got this approval, if we got it come to fruition, as far as the Army goes, we just have to pay for the fuel. They'll be using uh, deuce and a half, I suppose, to run from Litchfield Sand and Gravel down here, so they'll be using that. So we'll have to buy their fuel, and I suppose we'll feed them lunch or whatever. But uh, uh, that's all it'll cost us. So. <laughs> Talk about the materials while you're there. Um, uh, Rick Charbonneau at uh, Continental has uh, <coughs> is donating gravel and rocks and whatever that we need. So he came up with two options. If we can get the Army to do it, it's like short, really short money. And uh, the uh, dollars that you see there are really for fencing materials and signage and gates and things like that. And we suspect that a, a lot of folks in town, we could also save some additional money by installing it ourselves. And then if we had to have a contractor to do it, we went out and we purchased, we got one price, that's it. So we don't know if this is a high price or a low price or, or dead center. We got a price if someone were to, a uh, paving company were to come in and install it, and that includes running back and forth up and getting gravel, it would be about 21,000 bucks and it'd probably take about two or three days to do it. So we came up with these, uh, pro uh, both options. We're hoping that option one actually pans out and these, these uh, figures have been submitted over to the Rec Commission, uh, and they're taking a look at them now. So from the rec Recreation Commission standpoint, we'd love to use impact fees if they're available next year. Um, if not, we'd like to put it in our budget if we don't think we'd have rec um, impact fees. Clearly, it's going to be new recreation project for town. Um, I know the ball field we're building right now is taking most of the impact fees out of what we have available. I'm not sure what's going to be coming into next year if there's $7,600 available in that or not. Really, it's going to depend on what's there and what we as a group, the Recreation Commission Select, want to do for the money end. Um, if it's $7,600 or the $28,600, I think preferred $76,000, obviously we all would. Yep. And then we also, this is the last slide, we also took a look at some optional items, like if we had someone install the fence for us, we think we can have the Army do that, we can do it ourselves, that might be five grand. We're looking at security cameras, and they're very expensive, and the, I think almost half the cost is because there's no electricity down there. And so <coughs> Rich has been looking at what it would take to get electricity down there, and I guess the electric company will run the first 125 feet for free, and maybe we can get the first 125 feet for free and uh, wire them up and save some money on that. We don't know if these are gonna be needed, uh, but we're exploring that anyway. Those security cameras are also coming to solar powered cameras as well. Pretty much the same cost frame as drive, running the electric down there. Right? Yep, that's what we're, we're finding out. <laughs> I had two poles run at Jeff Lane. It cost $6,300. $6, okay. Two, for them to run two telephone poles. So over it's what, very expensive. Over what distance? <laughs> I can't it's like a, it was like. It wasn't much. Yeah. Like 200 feet. So that's the, did I miss anything, anybody? No, but you know, the board, we, the committee's thinking is with the rocks and the trees, we may not need the, uh, the security cameras at this point. The thought was maybe we'll add it in, but if we don't need it, mm -hmm. don't put them up until later. We, we want to close it in the winter time anyway, which is the hardest visibility time. Anyway, for the police department to get back there, that's what the front gate was about. Um, for the parks in town that we have now, 
that we have pretty limited problems. We talk now and again, but not that often. Yeah. Most of the commission members travel down to uh, parks regularly just to look at them. You know, Joan made some points the other day. I've been hitting the Sawmill Brook regularly lately because there was some people <coughs> going down there at night. It, I don't, self control is usually the easiest place. I don't know if we need to go down the security camera end. I think we've used the cameras at Garrett Point <coughs> twice mm -hmm. in 10 years or 12 years. Yeah. Uh, but that will really depend on what we have for activity down there. Just feedback that I've gotten from the public, I suspect that we're going to get a lot of use to this. I've heard from a lot of people who are really anxious. We're going to, and I, correct me if I'm wrong, John, but we're going to say it's for Litchfield only. Now, whether, you know, we're not going to keep people out. We're not going to ask the police to police it. But that's what we're going to say, and you know, whether people adhere to that. We want the signage to say Litchfield residents only. If we're not having problems with other people using it, we won't address it. If it starts becoming a problem, we will address it. If it goes to having a dump sticker on your vehicle to making sure that you're in there, we'll, we'll head down that path if it gets there. And the rec commission will, with the police department and others, will monitor that situation as we go along. So uh, with that, I mean, we put a lot of effort to this on turned every stone, and I think that you know we're we're trying our best to make sure that this is the best place possible, and that we're taking everything into consideration. I commend you for your work; it's incredible. Just a couple of questions uh, that I may have. Um, I assume you talked to the police chief about security and yeah, that, uh, correspondence. And, and John Brunel is also been involved. Yes. Okay. And just your assessment, Chief, of, of um, you know, if you have a parking lot out of sight, mm. do you, how do you feel that that might? Um, I, I don't think it would be a problem. It would just be part of the uh, officer's patrol, be just another road that you would, just like a new road in town. Okay. Uh, the officers go down and check it out and stuff. And the more police presence and people seeing that and stuff like that, it's right off of 3A. I don't, I don't see it being a security issue. So you don't have, you didn't have an issue with it? Do you you mentioned that um, the whoever was farming that had an issue uh, had a concern mm. about the whole border there that people would go in and you know get crops and stuff. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm that's a valid concern mm -hmm. because that that's quite a strip, right? That goes right along there. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think the trees and the rocks and I mean the split rail fence would be? I mean. That's certainly something that would that would help, but as you get farther down, um, how do you feel that might really keep people from going in there and getting it's pumpkins? Risk. And it's a risk. But right. it's got to be minor when you consider all of the trails behind all the farmland right now that are accessible to people in town. This is just and, one more access point to the. And back that's and that's a valid point because there's a lot of farmland in town that that. And right along 3A, I mean, it's open field right there. At least this way, you know, you've got two-way traffic. Someone would have to park their car, jump out, and jump over a rock to get whatever, they, you know, their pumpkin or oh, whatever they're trying to so, But I'm just saying that going in there is a lot easier to get the yeah. pumpkin out of sight than it is parking on 3A. You know, they, I don't think anyone would park on 3A and run down to get a pumpkin, but they certainly would go down the road, go out of sight behind a tree and run in and get a few. Just, it's a, yeah. it's a concern, it's, it's a and, concern and, and I just want to bring that up, that, that uh, field, if, if the, I were the farming the land, I might have that concern. The field's corn down there. It's what? The it's called corn, right? No, it's no. on the front and then squash on the inside. But I think we would Squash post, dealers? We, <laughs> well, we would pose no trespassing never signs have. Yeah. To, the set, to the north there. I think it would be minimal if it's if it become is even a problem people are going down there to kayak that i don't think you're sure. going to have someone come off a of 3a thinking right. they're they going to do their wouldn't do it during the day they would do it at night and then and it's it going to be there's a gate at an night. issue that if you put a curfew well, we, have we have a gate that's going to that we're planning okay. on locking at night yeah who's that, that's, 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 that's that's certainly my we've done it in the past like shut gates mm -hmm. okay. okay who's going to manage the gate We've done it in the past. Like Darrow Pong, we used to close that and stuff. Okay. Uh, if you're going to be closed during the winter time, yeah. you know, 
But I mean, if you guys close it in the evening, then you'd have to open it in the in the morning too. And that would just be something you'd have to add into your patrols. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Would, uh, just one other thing, it, probably directed to Joan. Joan, when the conservation bought the land, when was that? Uh, two or three years ago. 2014. Yes. Now the whole parcel was what that you bought. Was it cost? No, no, no. The whole parcel. How many acres? Thirteen. Thirteen. Was now is there a conflict? And certainly, I don't know. If conservation buys it, but won't it be under the jurisdiction of recreation? The con conservation can buy it; they can't own it. So, Selectman Town and the town own it, and recreation can manage it. Okay. And we bought it to protect farmland, but I distinctly remember saying it also had river access, and that was a big selling point on that. And who else is on the committee? The, no, yeah, no. The um, there's someone else that, that also brought up river access when he voted for yes as well. Oh, Roger. 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 Well, certainly, um, my father was the recreation director in Manchester, and I know he'd come right down from heaven and strike me if I <laughs> I didn't support, <laughs> <laughs> or wherever he is. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think this has been something that people have been wanting for years, like decades, you know. And the fact that we've been here for so long and we don't have public access to the river, to me it's a crime, you know, that <coughs> the river is a wonderful resource and there's so many people that would like to be, be able to use it, you know, and they can't. And, and you've done it. Great job. My only concern is how we move. I don't. Can we approve something we don't have an appropriation for, or can we? Um, if you intended on putting a warrant in or something for, we prefer not to put a warrant. Okay. We'd rather put it in our budget because just like the fields that we've constructed with impact fees or otherwise, we don't put those out for warrant. The Recreation Commission votes on it, which we've already voted on uh, approving this project funding-wise, putting it into our budget, whether it comes from impact fees or budget, would depend on what's available on impact fees. Because of the time frame we're looking at May of next year, I'm not sure what's going to be available in that end, but it really comes down to applying to the Army sure. to get that forward. Well, I have a few questions. Sure. And I guess I'm saying I... Uh, if you intend on seeking appropriation, then I guess well, it, it, the, meet, the meeting the tonight, the meeting tonight determines what we do tomorrow with the Recreation Commission mm -hmm. and the, going to Troy to talk to him about that. Okay. So we're waiting to see what the Conservation Commission said the other night and what you guys say tonight. Because if there's a roadblock, there's no point in us pursuing it in the Recreation Commission. Okay. If there's no roadblock, that's where we're going to go with it. Okay. We're going to put in our budget, head down that path. Mr. Perry. Okay. First question: What's the distance between driveways? Uh, it is about 120 to 150 feet. I check with the DOT, and there is no stipulation on distance between driveways on really? State Highway. There's only a stipulation on distance between a driveway and a crossing road. Oh, intersection. Yeah, oh, intersection. I was wondering because in my end of town, they had to put one driveway for two houses because, so it must have been because it intersected Temple Drive. No. No? What no. was it? Because they didn't think there needed to be four driveways there, that's why. <laughs> but why did the state, but the state had to come and give them huh? The state wouldn't allow four, they only allowed two. And it was new construction. It was four new construction. Okay, so why did the state only allow two? I guess that's because what I'm saying. Because they said that you don't need four, you need two. Wow, okay. Wow. Who's going to argue with the state? Well, yeah. So that was the first question. So you're obviously going to have to do state permitting? Mm hmm And that's already Yep, I've already talked to the state DOT rep for this area yep. and uh, talked to him about the plan. He didn't see any problem whatsoever. How about the abutter? Yes. The yes. abutter to the south was actually on the committee. Still is. Still is. So they're on board with this? Um, no. This is the dissenting vote. Uh, one point of one note is that we did vote on this as a subcommittee, and the vote was 10 to 1. And she was the dissenting vote. And her concerns were primarily just having people down there. I can't speak for her, but 
she, she, said, she said in our meeting she didn't want people using her docks or piers that are on the water and so forth. Well, if we can post that. Uh, one of the things I talked to her about was the signage we do put up down the bottom, the rules. I want her a part of that process because she's got the concerns about her. Hey, you know, we don't want you crossing into her, her land. We don't want you using her piers, etc. cetera. Uh, she said she'd work with me that when we start developing signage. And if I'm not mistaken, we, it's been a couple months since we went down there, but when you go down to the, the river point right here, the abutters here, when you go down to the river point right here, there's actually a stream that comes through there. Blocks you off. So you can't, I don't believe you can just walk over there. Quite a gully. Quite the, a gully there. The stream yeah. on both sides. Stream coming from both sides of the property. Yeah. Right? So there's a stream here, and then there's a stream there. So that's kind of. She was talking about once you're on the river. She had some other concerns towards opening too early in the spring and having the water be rough. And I said, but guys like me want the water to be fast, so we really should leave that up to the boaters. Just like any, any other water in the state, it's become state property at that point. It's monitored by the state for who's on the water. Uh, we could put recommendations, hey, get a boater's license and so forth, but it's not required for canoe or kayak access in the state anyway. Okay. So that goes to my next question. What's the river terrain like there? What's what? What's the river terrain like there? So when you come off the, when you come down here at the end of the parking lot, on the north side boundary, there's an entrance probably 20 feet, 15 to 20 feet wide, and then it slopes along with the property line going this way. When we were down doing the site walk, the water was at the bottom of the slope. You turn, and it's probably 30 feet wide, and the water was up to that. And again, like all of it, it's very silty as you get across and walking in there. The further out the water goes at this time right now it's pretty far back you're probably walking 50 feet yeah it's shallow there it's not like yeah. more falls you can go out and it drops right off but this is fairly shallow. calm and the it river's gentle calm in that location really gentle i mean when we were there and that was that was in the spring the only time it's really fast is april yeah. all right so that answers my next question which is why wouldn't you make it open to motors motorized boats but if it's too shallow at that point that'd be because the River Access Committee voted to go canoes and kayaks before I got involved. <laughs> well, and then you're adding but, a, you're but, adding another cost to ensure line is permits very tough and stuff for boats. And there's a lot of rock obstructions. Okay. It's nasty. There's also a site we looked at up in Manchester um, that we walked through. It would be a great put in and then take out over here. But if you're going to put it in Manchester, you're going to be built to carry because you're talking what 300 and something feet we were walking over. Maybe more terrain. than that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It was tough terrain to get over there. But that also bridge. ends up being an option because the state was like, yeah, go ahead, use it. We don't care. They were going to help us along the path until we realized the amount of construction up there was astronomical because they've got a 30, what, 38 foot slope? Yep. Down. Yeah. 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 So my last thing is this, and this is more to the board. I do not oppose this, but my question is, is this may be an open meeting, but this isn't a public meeting advertising we may be approving this. Should we have a public meeting so that if anybody has concerns, they can come in? I think that's a valid point. Mm -hmm. um, and for the same token, right. people that support it can come and say, you definitely need to do this. I've been waiting for it for so many years. So what we're asking for tonight isn't, an, I don't believe, is an approval or yeah, a disapproval. We give you a consent to go we, to, we are to asking the honor. for a. Um, we're asking for, I guess we're asking for signature on an application that goes to the Army so that they can start the paperwork And that's non-binding on the project. I, I'm saying, though, that i got to get with Troy in our budget, too. If this is something we're going to go forward, we need to move this forward quickly, too. It's been foot in the mud with a few people trying to prevent this project, I think, for a while. Um, and that's slowed this down. I, I, I would have preferred to be in here a month and a half ago. But I think the public hearing is a good idea. Doesn't hurt. And, and I, I agree. Um, could we throw <coughs> it together for next meeting? Yeah, good. Could we? The, the time constraint that you have early? is your application. I thought I heard the deadlines that the end of the end of this. Is there month? anything to hold up the app? You know, can we submit the application? It's non-binding. Looking for the assistance to the Army Corps. I don't know if they are. Can we apply if it and then withdraw it? If it is a non-binding, I don't, I don't see any that. issue with it. Just, yeah, I don't just understand that it's, it's not a rubber it, it's stamp. It's pending yeah. approval yeah. Uh, from <coughs> local 
you know, vote and local officials. Should we do the budget pending approval as well for the Recreation Commission for a project like this? Would that well, be easy for you? Let's ask that question Let, now. Let's do you know what's in the Recreation Commission's impact fees? I thought it was about 4000 Not really. With the Jeff Lane project. Uh, There's nothing left. There's about $500. Yeah. <laughs> I thought, I thought we that pays for the sign. To oh, Jeff Lane. Yeah, but we purged everything out and moved it over to Jeff Lane and left $500 in there to fix something at Sawmill. Yeah. So we'll, this fall, we'll start getting some, some impact fees from the Page Road development. We um, haven't gotten any impact fees since last year. We have year. not issued a seat. So we're not looking to spend money in May of next year. So even if it's in our budget and we don't use it, it comes out of impact fees when we do use it in May, that would be the best, best scenario. We can probably strip it out of your budget right now. So <laughs> <laughs> That huge budget we've got rocking out there. <laughs> Mr. Bark, do you add? Uh, Jerry, just real quick, I know I know you mentioned about the, the fire department access mm -hmm. as far as going down there. So it sounds to me on the trail side of it, it's just going to be a walking trail. So the fire department couldn't take their boat down there to get it in the water? There's so, another gate. It, there, there, there is enough room right now to get the swing. for You've got the small boat, right? Yeah, well, yeah. I, I wouldn't say it's small, but yeah. 16 foot? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I could get my 16 foot with my pickup truck down there. Okay. Without the the rocks we'd have to put a gate down the end of that that's where the fire department wants what you don't um, see is when you come down the field just to visualize it right there actually is a it's a cut in without there's a cut already here there's a stone to the right that's probably about the only thing that you move and then it swings down it just goes right down along the side of the river <laughs> boat access wise get down the bottom it's going to be silty but at that point it doesn't matter anyway right, right. sir Based on what we see, you could get a four-wheel drive pickup truck with a trailer in there, back it in, dump it out, okay. and pull out. Correct. So let's say that the water's running rough. It's a typical spring. <coughs> and you put in, and you go, you get swept away, gone. You, is it gonna, is it gonna be easy to get back to the, to the drop-in where you got in, number one, number two? Mm -hmm. If you do take off, where can you get out again? Lowell. Yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> there's nothing in Hudson there's, either. There's get off in, in, in Merrimack. Honesty, anybody who does river kayaking, yeah. they already know this uh, in, in advance. Right. No, nobody's climbing onto a river the size of Merrimack and not having a clue what they're doing. Uh, yeah. Most of the size of your rivers. You're, you're assuming a lot. Yeah. 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 I listen to the Manchester Fire Department and. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, people try, to run, those rap people oh, try to run those rapids in Manchester because they look great to do oh, it. If you haven't geez. done it, you're out of your mind. Yeah. yeah. Um, but there's eddies going up along the side of our, our river. I mean, it, okay. it's you'd be able to pull out in Hudson if you needed to, and you have to walk back. I mean, if that's if you weren't able to control your craft, but mm. you've got to make that decision as a as a boater. I See an angry person know, dragging a kayak. I don't know. The Recreation Commission doesn't really care who goes on Dara Pond because it's up to the boater to know what they're doing out in the water. Same thing with the river. We, Ro we really Roger on the that. it was Roger on the Conservation Commission yeah. who said he's a. Uh, uh, he canoes and kayaks all the time and he said he's been from this point down and actually I think a bit north down yep. it is pretty gentle flowing okay. all the way down into Tingsboro he went and, to Lowell and he, he said he went dam. to Lowell and turned around and came back up so it must it must get narrow and then widen out you know through this area it, and that's why I think there are very few rapids I mean I haven't yep. been down there myself but when you get up in the north part of town by St. Francis some of those sites that we looked at there it's narrow there, there, there are rapids yeah. in a lot of rocks there yeah. but this Wood seems fall. to be steady flow, smooth as silk, but I haven't I been have on there. one Latin, last question for me. What liability will this place on the town, such as insurance? Um, just how like, the town just like their bonds. The hmm? water is not in control of the town. As far it's as we understand, the water, the water is state controlled. No, no, I understand, but... You're not, you're not charging a fee, so... There shouldn't be any liability to the town, but check the insurance company. Just like your Conservation Act is to rest recreational parks, it's a parking lot. Okay. That's all we provided to people. We've got town insurance for liability in a I parking lot. I just but don't want to make sure that the town all of a sudden is involved in a financial liability that we didn't expect and, to and be. You have to take care of the, the issues. You have a sign down there that says, you know, life preserves are mandated and, you know, common sense type things. Put them on the sign because not everybody... Okay. Any other members? Questions? Are you all set? Yeah. Okay. If I could, just one other thing. Um, 
these guys have done a remarkable job on this whole deal. And I've, I've really been absolutely proud to be associated with these young guys. And I, I want to bring something to you guys' attention. If you haven't, there's a tape currently on the, the uh, last Conservation Commission meeting. And I suggest that you as selectmen watch that tape. And I'm, I'm, uh, I think that you'll find that we have a problem with conflict of interest and we have a problem with uh, how we collect rent and how, uh, who a tenant is for town property and, and how that rent is established. I think that you as selectmen Town managers need to take a look at those what you have with respect to policies. Take a look at that tape, and you can go back into previous Conf conservation commission uh, meetings. And I think that we have a real conflict of interest on the conservation commission. And hey, I'm a big boy. I've been around. I can take a lot of it, but I'm alarmed when we have young people here who are going out of their way to do a good job and they have to see that. We've got two young guys that are on the Conservation Commission right out of high school and when they have to see blatant, absurd conflict of interest on a town board like the Conservation Commission, you guys need to take a look at that and take action. We'll take that Thank you. And I think that's the last thing is, is how do we move forward with the application thing? I will ask um, for a consensus of the board. Where it's all binding, you know, like non-binding, like we were talking right. about, I have no issue with it. I say, I'd right. say move forward. I, I'll accept a motion to, to sign the um, document for the end. I, I make a motion that the Board of Selectmen allow Mr. Brown to sign on our behalf on this application to the Army for the construction of a road and a parking lot for this said boat path. Second. Moved by Mr. Perry, seconded by Mr. Bork. Discussion. Troy, you don't have a problem with that, right? Nope. Unless it requires a selectman. In that case, I'll sign it for the board. No, it, it, I looked at it today, just town official. Okay. So. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Abstain. Motion carries four zero zero. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For your efforts. So what would the next meeting be for public input? Uh, We're gonna uh, try to do a next one. Ne our next meeting in, in two weeks, September um, right there. You September twenty fifth. This week or uh, time this week. September twenty fifth, okay. Yep. We might need a bigger room. Yeah. <laughs> bigger boat, bigger room. Thank you. Oh <laughs> bigger Take it easy. Thank you. Maybe I won't be in it. <laughs> if for some reason you know that that number is going to be like a hundred people, seriously, yeah, let, let us know. No, we're going to. I hate my view. You know I'm like because we we can move the meeting. Work. I can see this whole spreadsheet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, being it that it's uh, ten of seven, I will open the floor for public input. If there is any member of the public that wishes to speak. Um, seeing none, I will close public input. Hey, should we let uh, Chief Freisel go first? He's been waiting here a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we start uh, with our budget I'll review? For the more senior department heads. <laughs> and we will start with the road agent, Mr. Pensiero. Come forward, please. <coughs> Oh, all right. <laughs> You're not that far behind me. <laughs> oh. Mr. Brown. Okay. So I'll just quickly do the highlights and then uh, any technical questions, Jack can uh, help answer those. So the first, the first account was road agent, account number 4311. Is everyone on that that page? You good? Mm -hmm. You're there. Um, 
All right, just see you coming in. So you can see the bottom line here uh, is rep representing an increase of $1,105. That's all driven by uh, our propane estimate. Our propane pricing throughout the town increased from $1.12 per gallon to $1.34 a gallon. <coughs> this is, again, a price that's locked in by the school. So a combination of just looking at um, historical usage and the new pricing is what's driving that price up to $1,105. All right, I have a question. Why is the stipend $913? Because he probably got a cost of living increase at some point in time. Right, that's how we Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, there's no other way to explain how it's $13. Right. We should raise that to $1,000. Do I have to make a motion? Yes. I make a motion to raise line 130 to $1,000. Moved by Mr. Perry to raise line 130 from 913 to $1,000 even. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Schaefer. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstain? Motion carries 400. Bottom line should be 45850 now. That's correct. If uh, nobody has an objection, I'll make a motion to move budget 4311.10, road agent, the amount of $45,850. Moved by Mr. Perry. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Bork. Discussion? Can I, <coughs> can I just offer some discussion? Um, as we had discussed at the last meeting, one of the things that's missing throughout this budget is salary um, adjustments for this current fiscal year. Mm -hmm. We agreed at the last meeting that we'd put a, um, a lump sum amount in for 2018 under the personnel section. So I'm not sure if we want to vote bottom line, knowing that we'll come back well, with the no salary, salary adjustment. There's no salary in here outside of the stipend, correct? Yeah, okay. I'm sorry. I just... <laughs> that was why I did it. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 400. <laughs> Road maintenance 4312.10. Okay, so the, the first line there is salary. Um, that adjustment is actually a reflection of the current uh, rate of pay for. Um, highway manager, the equipment operator, and our seasonal employee. So even though it's showing an increase, that's nothing to do with the discussion we just had. It's just actual cost today. The next increase that you see is in our contracted services, the amount of $3,840. One of the things that Jack came to me with is that he was getting feedback from the contractors. The contractors that provide a, uh, a driver and their own plow vehicle they had asked if they could receive a five dollar increase per hour so i think that brought them up to from seventy dollars to seventy five dollars <coughs> they've not had an increase in about not how many years jack nine years yeah that is not an increase in uh, drivers supplied by them only a truck and driver so the hourly rate for the truck and drive, yeah. so and drive by one of their right. people. It's been over nine years, actually, since they had a raise, like closer to 10. All right. Equipment rental. The next increase highway tree removal. We are um, trying to get this line up. Um, I know we tried last year, didn't have any luck. But we would like to establish this line at $5,000 on an annual budget. It's still going to do um, uh, minimal work, but um, I think it will be a good step in the right direction. We have a lot of large trees uh, along all of our streets and roads, uh, and they, they're, these trees are the type that um, Jack and his crew, just they can't take those down. You, you really need to have a professional tree service come in with their crane uh, to remove them. Cost eight thousand uh, dollars, eight hundred dollars to take 
one tree down in front of the school that was dead. I mean, actually leaning, it was so dead. We're, we're in a dangerous situation. We don't have enough money to take them down. They really need to look at it long and hard. We're still looking to carry uh, for road sweeping the same amount, $8,000 annually, uh, $25,000 for our road improvement. So those are jobs like you see the patching on Albuquerque where we did last fall, several areas that were showing some signs of um, uh, decay. We were able to go in and do some re repair work. Pine, Pine Crest, you did a crossing uh, last year. Uh, but we're still holding that at $25,000. Catch basins, um, we clean about a third of the catch basins throughout the town for $9,000. And the next increase that you see is $3,500 for the, should be the catch basin, okay, the catch basin replacement. So not only is it the catch basin replacement, really what we're saying here is um, part of the catch basins are the grates, the structure themselves, but what we've discovered this year with the work going on up at the north end, a lot of our um, drainage pipes, the stormwater pipes are old. They're galvanized and we're finding that the bottoms of the galvanized pipes are starting to deteriorate. So we um, you had a situation this weekend where on Temple Drive, we had a sinkhole. Um, we had to go down there and excavate and in that case, we actually found a different situation, but we still replaced it with the plastic pipe, and that's sort of the standard today. We do anticipate that we're gonna start finding more and more um, signs of uh, failure uh, throughout the stormwater collection system. Vehicle fuel, $1,000. This is the diesel fuel. Uh, we're still holding the price, uh, <coughs> according to the EPA website and the forecast they had, uh, at $2.75 a gallon. Um, but the, the history, the usage, you can see uh, 4,000 gallons is probably a, a better estimate of the annual usage. <coughs> Vehicle repairs, we're proposing to increase that $5,000. So we're going from 28,033. And, and this is the primary driver here is the fact that the fleet is aging uh, and Jack is finding that every year that he's um, not only during the annual inspections but just um, throughout the year um, you know things are failing and it's expensive to repair um, and that's what's driving that sand purchases up $2,500 this is um, Based on you know your usage and <clears throat> last last winter was a prime example of why it's really important to have the sand on uh, uh, stored and ready to go. We we try to use the sand salt mixture as much as possible to um, you know conserve the straight salt mix. Uh, you went through last year. You ran out of sand. I think you told me. You ran out of money. You ran out of money. <laughs> That was the issue. <clears throat> we had a hard time again. It was another year of not getting salt on a time in a timely, you know, timely manner. So we're using salt sand, trying to extend, you know, what we had. Is our shed full now? Yeah, it is full. Hopefully, it lasts us the rest of the year. <laughs> I'm hoping uh, this year it should. Yeah. I mean, unless we really get salt. Yeah, that's what you were able to do last year, if I remember correctly. Right. Yeah, I remember we ordered in January 1, we ordered 400 tons January 1st. And so with salt, we are uh, a couple of things going on here, just like the uh, propane fuel. <coughs> Unfortunately, the, the uh, state bid price for salt increased from uh, $52 and I think 48 cents to $54 a ton this year. And we've also increased um, our allowance uh, at about eight, you know, we're carrying 1,800 tons. So that's driving that cost um, up by $16,200.
And the reason for that is we've added roads over the last 10 years. And we haven't raised our salt number at all. <clears throat> we need to do it. it. It's just far too hard to try to stretch it every time it snows. It's ridiculous that we're doing that. If we get in a situation where, and it's not the lack of salt, it's the lack of trucks to bring the salt. Uh, Rick Schabernow's trucks were hauling from Manchester for over two weeks because they couldn't get trucks. Fortunately, Manchester has plenty of money, so they can pay. And some of this, <coughs> some of this salt, about what, 800 tons a year, 1,000 tons? Not okay. 800 tons. The, the school uses. Oh, we use uh, between six and 800 tons for the school that we're reimbursed for. Yeah. And we document that and then get paid. We, uh, their contract there will come in, notify me that they used A, they mark it on a slip, I get a copy, he gets a copy, and then it goes to the school and we get paid. Yeah. We're not doing it for free. And we don't credit the budget, so we, we budget an offsetting revenue so that we can track uh, the reimbursement. Right. So. so it goes into the general fund? It comes in as general fund, comes in as budgeted revenue. Right, okay. Yeah. But is that included in the 1,800 tons or no? That's included yes. in the 1,800 yeah. Their Their contractor is not able to get this bid price, so we have an agreement where they can come and use our salt. So it, it reduces the cost for the school. Um, that was solid. So the next, I'm not going to, in the past, I've adjusted the uh, highway block grant amount. Um, not really comfortable doing that this year, not knowing where it's going to be. So I'm, I've just left it at the 201,000, um, which was the la last year's amount. So. Questions from the board? It's expensive running equipment. Oh yeah? Keeping the roads quick. This happens. Uh, so do we want to wait and vote on the bottom line once we reach an agreement on salaries, or do you want to vote and then come back just an overlay? So if, we, if we vote, we'll have to vote again. So we'll just have to vote twice, right? <clears throat> All right? Okay. All right. So we will we'll let this ride until we have um, until we overlay the salaries. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> you have anything else for us? No, but while Jack's here, do we want to talk about um, the Warren article for? There's two Warren articles. <clears throat> One, the the funding, the extra two hundred thousand dollars for road improvements, and the lease purchase of the brand new plow truck. Would you want Let to me have explain that discussion what's happened with your trucks? Yeah. yeah, why don't we do that? I had the trucks inspected. I've always had them inspected. Well, in the last couple of years, they've been warning me that the frames are an issue, or will be. Well, this year they came on strong. They made me reinforce the frames in some places. May not pass next year. The two salt trucks that we bought from the state that we paid $8,500 for, one we've got nine and a half years out of, and the other one we've got almost five years going into the sixth year. So we, they don't owe us anything. They've worked hard. We've had them doing a good job. We need to replace one. <coughs> right now, a warrant, artic uh, a warrant article for, uh, how do you put it? Sale for a lease purchase? Lease purchase. I got some prices. They come out. If we were to take the lowest bid, it would be, uh, I won't mention the name, but it's 141000 141, Now, that's a new truck, new body, new hydraulics, angle plow, <coughs> wing, the, complete, everything. Is it, a drop in, is it a live bed or a drop-in sander? It's a drop-in sander. Okay. Yeah. With the that's part of the truck price. 
part of the 141. Well, the hydraulics for that is in that. Okay, so we have right. to sander yeah, on top but of okay. We do have an angle plow poly. We have a, a wing, a short wing post uh, so that we can do uh, shelving. Uh, 141000 That's a, even less than what we paid for the first one. <laughs> I don't know how that number came in, but. Freightliner? That's Freightliner, yeah. If you go to international, there's a difference of about ten thousand dollars. Both state bid price, right? Yep. Mm. I went to Mac. Mac wouldn't tie. We even bother. They said we're over a hundred. You interested? No. Well, this is over a hundred. Well, this is including okay. everything. This has got the plow, the hydraulics. That's just the chassis at over a hundred for a Mac. Volvo, same thing. So when we bought the last one, did we buy just the body and then everything yeah. else got added on after? Yeah. So wasn't that like? 150. I thought we paid like $57,000 for it. No, 150,000. We paid 50 something thousand for the chassis, then we took it up to uh, Fairfield and they, right. and then they, they did everything it. else. It, it came and out at about 151 something, I think. Done. If we get a new truck, do you think that hot greasing it every year would be a good idea too? To grease it? Hot grease it underneath the frame and everything. Yeah. Keeps they get it pros just, and cons with that, but yeah, I know, I, I know I it would, pulls in some things. Yeah, but I would I would say that it would be a good idea. Yeah. Slow down the rust a little bit yeah. anyway. It gets them a new truck, you'll say it. <laughs> yeah. I, our our truck has uh, a little over ten thousand miles. These are what ten? What do we figure? Ten and fifteen years, twenty years. Well, you should if you, yeah, you should be able to get fifteen years. years out of the plow truck. Yeah. What's the GBW that you're looking at? Thirty-three thousand. That CDL. Do you need a CDL? That's a rear. Yeah. Okay. It's thirty-three in the back, thirty-two in the front. No, but I mean you have to have CDL oh, yeah. to drive it. Oh yeah. Anything right. with air brake. Do you have a CDL? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, any other questions on this warrant? Did you have another one? Just um, if you're if you're um, actually in the budget, you can click. I think if you go back down to the block grant, uh, Jack and I have worked on uh, a five-year plan. <clears throat> so there should be a hyperlink there under the uh, right beside the uh, road improvement line. Seven thirty. Do you see it? Five-year plan. If you click on it. Uh, yeah. All right. So Jack and I have been working for the last couple of weeks going around and just um, sort of doing an assessment of the roads, trying to come up with a plan uh, that would level fund work uh, for the next five years to the best of our ability. Um, and so you can see for 2018, uh, the roads that we're looking to do. Broadville Drive, Chemo Circle, Coquias Circle, um, Picasso Drive, and Sada Drive? Sada Way. Sada, Sada <coughs> Way. Um, and that's all estimated at, we've, we've not hired an engineer, we've just kind of taken a look at what we paid out this year um, for a lot of the work, and um, we're estimating that at about $412,000. We're hopeful that it'll be less. Uh, oh, definitely, we, you know, will we, be less. we think so we've estimated on the high, high side. And then you can see what we're proposing in 2019, 2020, 2021, and so on. This is really the first time we've ever put a number to the roads that we were planning on. There aren't many left out there to pay. <laughs> Thankfully. Well, I think, yeah, a lot of them, you can see we're, we still got some reclaim and paving. You can see the first two years, 2018, 19. Um, it's, it's still, you'll, you'll have it. Albuquerque Ave, if we're able to, to do that in 2020, you know, it's just an overlay. Um, but I think once we get, uh, you can see we actually have a master. They are on the five year plan here, but if you click on the master, then we get into um, where we did a rating. We did a 
you know, A, we don't need to get to the road for another 15 years. So all the, all the roads that have been paved this summer, uh, we're saying that they have a life expectancy before we just do an overlay. We'll have to do a reclaim of 15 years. And then we did a rating A, B, C, and D. So this is how we've, you know, generated the, the, uh, the, the next five years. These streets are all rated, or sections of them, are rated as a D. When we get into the C's, um, we get into more of uh, sort of a spot grind yep. in overlay, but primarily overlay. Similar to what we're doing on page this year. So we are in good shape, um, but we're not as close as we really think we are. I mean, it's still five years out is a long ways, and you know how what happens. Things change. You know, Albuquerque could possibly have to move up. Um, you just never know. So last year, when we talked about taking the 200000 off and not asking for it from the voters, you had made the statement that do it next year, don't do it this year. I did. I did. But when you go back through everything that we have, we're not, we're, we're not even halfway. Yeah, but we're never going to be halfway. Yeah, we will. No, we won't. Uh, you're gonna get through, I think so. You're going to be halfway through these Ds, and there's going to be 10 new Ds behind it. Eh, I kind of doubt that. We're, we're doing the road, railroads right, Steve, really. You know, I, I don't question what you're doing. I think you're doing a great job, and I don't ever want it to be interpreted any other way. But we're trying to get a fire station to go through, and we figured, and we all said, that we wanted to keep everything to an absolute minimum in order to do it. If we do 140 for your truck, and we do another 200 for the roads, we're just crushing the taxpayers. Only if a fire station passes. If it passes. If it passes. That's right. Big word. It is a big word, but we have to we have to plan like you can. I'm not in not in favor. I'm saying is that you know do we all turn our back on everything in the town because we need a fire station? You're still going to get impact. You're still going to get the uh, block grant. The block grant money. But you're you're a cop. I just think that. Sometimes we put too many eggs in one basket, expecting a different result. And Sometimes you have to. We'll see, right? What's more important, the truck or the roads? I, I, I won't not cut my throat. I both, but it is your call, not mine. Well, the, the truck is, uh, we're proposing to do a lease purchase. <laughs> And so that's only twenty thousand. So we're looking at twenty thousand something dollars for the next eight years. Yeah. It's not the full hundred sixty thousand. You have to just appropriate it in the language and then Yeah, they would have uh what was the, what, there was some kind of wording in it you said it had to be in it. Yeah, opt out. Yes. Opt out provision, right? In yeah. case a non appropriation clause. My worry is that I, I send them for inspection and it comes back, done. That's what bothers me. And then what do I do? How are we going to plow our roads if we don't have trucks that work? Yeah, That's right. Exactly. exactly. Contract it out. It's not like we didn't do it before. Yeah, if you can find them. That's an issue. I mean, the contract is trucks. an issue for everybody, though. I the mean, contractor's like trucks are not in the great shape. How many trucks do we plow with? We, we own three truck plow trucks, <laughs> four plow trucks. So if you had two go down, we would be absolutely oh. good. Yeah. Yeah. We contract five? Uh, three, right? We have seven routes. We have four trucks. So, so we do yeah. three. So you have three contract contracted. Four? Yeah. Or the other way around? The other way around. That's what, where, where it gets kind of sketchy is you have one truck go down, now you got to pull a guy off <coughs> another route to go to that route. You know, hit his route, open everything up, and then go to that other route, open all that up, and then another one goes down. So now you got two down. Yeah. And this goes on all night long because the trucks are all old. Uh, uh, Jack, just to, to Steve's point, just a question. Do you have, or would it be wise to have, uh, a backup contractor in case, no matter what happens. Uh, if you did find we, them. We used, 
find a backup guy. It, it's so hard to find anybody. Well, see, that's what I'm saying. I, I, I don't know. I'm asking. If, if you were able to do that. If oh, you, if we were able to do it, I'd do it in a second, yeah. Because we used to contract out everything except for That's true. One, but and I, then they started going away one by one by one. The only ones that are here are people, the three people that live in town. Yeah. Jeff Gway, uh, Dougie St. Lawrence, and uh, uh, Eagle. That's it. So who drives our trucks? Because they're drivers. They bring them in. We pay them forty dollars an hour. They pay the insurance. Okay. Which is a pretty ask, good deal know, for us. Because I know you don't have enough uh, workers down. Yeah, there. but I mean, it's a good deal for us. They come in. You know, they they're working directly for those guys. It's perfect. But we have to maintain those trucks. It's Brent. I mean, in, in Jack's defense. I mean, I've been plowing for 30 years. It's very difficult to find anybody that's going to want to wait. You know, sure. they're going to go out and work, and, yeah. and they're going to be busy with the work that they have. So right. if we do have another contractor available, it might be difficult to get them to come in here unless we commit to them. Sure, and I understand that. I was just throwing it The out. issue with a subcontractor, we're fortunate, the ones we have, their trucks are in the yard right now. They're there all year. They don't go anywhere. But you hire, and I had that happen, where a contractor came in, he was plowing for me, he's off his route, where'd he go? He had another route. Mm. So he, he's collecting off me, and he's off plowing one of his own. So, I mean, those are the kind of things that you're dealing with. And you have to have ghost riders out there making sure they're on the route. So you're paying for nothing. The truck is probably the most important at this point, I would think, to be honest with you. I mean, these trucks are that bad that we really need to do something. Is there any way, it, um, I know that you're pretty proactive. Have you looked to see if there's anything coming up in any auctions or anything like that? I plan on it. I, I do plan on it. Only because if you are that bad off, if at the end of the year, maybe we got a couple of bucks, maybe we can buy another one of those $9,000 Band-Aids to add in. I thought about that, I'm yeah. I'm sure it won't be 9000 either. And I don't think they've gone up much. Really? No, not from what I'm hearing. Well, it costs us about the same to swap all the stuff out. So on. we're there. Well, no, there's no cost when you get a state truck because they're all plumbed already. They got all the plumbing you need. Right, you just hang a plow and a wing on it, and off you go. Wings, the one that we bought, the last one we bought, was plowing that night we picked it up that morning and it was plowing that night i mean fortunate and then we got a lot of years out of them mm -hmm. yeah you lucked out there yeah really did they came with computers when you have to buy a computer for them nice any other questions for jack okay any questions for us jack? nope i'm good thank you for coming in thanks for putting me on a spot thank you. <laughs> Just make sure, you know, he's still going to plow his street, right? You know? oh. <laughs> it gets done eventually. <laughs> he's on the bottom of the list. <laughs> All right. See you guys. Good night. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Gentlemen, Chief, oh. Captain, yeah, come on here. You're, you're, you're next. You're on board. I got to run to the yep. You guys should have done call ahead instead of wait, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Should have had them run to Dunkin' Donuts for us. Oh, oh, oh. Already did. Already did, sir. <laughs> Chief, I just want to say publicly, welcome back. And, Thank you uh, very much. I'm sure that uh, that sentiment is shared by a lot of people. Nice to see you back in good shape. Yes, thank you. So, it's good to be back. Okay, we're going to start off with Mr. Brown. 4210.10. Is that what you okay, yeah, but yes. I, I think that you want you want to go ahead and present, yeah. yeah. Sure. <laughs> um, oh, how about can we wait one second? Sure, to we wait. To, sure, yeah. absolutely. Who's going to be putting the well in this week? 
Yeah. yeah. Sprinklers, yeah. So. What do you think they need to do? Do you know? Um, they're doing like a cistern in the ground. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so it's just going to pull all the water. Yeah, and then pump out of it. Yeah, we'll pump out of Chief, it. we might get to you tonight. Sorry. <laughs> it's not being done by a contractor. It's awesome. We can make a motion if you like. <laughs> yeah, we can make a motion. <laughs> Adjourn? No. <laughs> no, we're not going to have the. I'll, I'll second it. All the chiefs so. sitting here just to adjourn. Okay. Uh, what's that? All right, we're good. Chief. Okay. Uh, the board's pleasure. How would you like to? Do you want to go through line by line, or do uh, you want me to maybe any highlights? Maybe highlight the changes. Okay. The accounts have changed. Sure. Uh, we had some uh, contractual increases. Um, the first one is in 110, which is administration. And that was uh, 11,113. Um, under 111, you have uh, PD officers, which is the union contract that passed. That was uh, 45,403. And your new, your new officer. And the new officer. Thank you. Yes. The new officer. And, the, and the cost of the, uh, the new patrol officer that passed also. Chief, back up one second. Just in the administration? Yes. What were the changes? Just your? Uh, mine and uh, the captain's. Okay. I see. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Um, the third increase was uh, well, there was a decrease in the Wages over time for officers that went down almost eight thousand uh, dollars. The captain's overtime that went down also. Uh, PD court time there was a um, a little bump in there. We're seeing a lot of activity with the new officers that we have. So there's a lot more court time because they're um, they're relatively new, so they're not you know, to the whole court system and stuff like that. So they're stopping more people. You saying they're doing a lot? Yeah. <laughs> A lot Let's of stuff. Of a lot of stuff way. going on out there, sir. <laughs> <laughs> um, keeping Litchfield safe. They are <laughs> keeping it absolutely safe. Uh, there was an increase in the insurance costs, which was around seventy nine hundred dollars. Um, well, <clears throat> they uh, remember the budget committee um, took made a reduction. Fire, police, and then I think general uh, of what fifteen thousand or something. Yeah, they just went and made a reduction. So um, that increase is really just putting it back to what you know the Where existing should conditions be. should be. <clears throat> and Karen had gone through and adjusted all health insurance throughout all departments by ten percent. We still don't have the the rates yet. Okay. Um, there was a decrease in the community detail. Uh, by 3,500, I believe the initial number we had was 8,500. Uh, that was a new line last year, so that actually went down. We we seen a, a spending of probably around 5,000 this year. So we're gonna we're looking at keeping it around the same there. Now your insurance increases are these, uh, Troy? Are these actual? So yeah. this is actual today. Okay. So, I mean, that we can take that to the bank. I mean, well, no, we haven't received the uh, 2018 rates yet. So, we've just taken our current census and the current rates that we're paying, we've in increased them 10%. So, until we get sometime, mm -hmm. hopefully yes. by the end of October, we'll get what the rates will be. Yeah, they usually come in about October 30th. Yeah. There was two items um, for purchases. One is uh, a new consulate, which is the uh, dispatch uh, radio. We got that back, I want to say 2001. Um, they stopped working on those a few years back. And if you remember, we did the, uh, the whole change out of all of the cruisers, their radios. So we got a price from Motorola for the new consulate is $11,000. There's uh, a new copier 
our copier no longer they no longer going to service our side or the town side. Uh, so we went up and, and viewed some of the copiers that they had, and they have some that are comparable to ours, and uh, $6,600 is what they cost. We have some other contractual stuff under PD equipment, uh, bulletproof vests. There's three that are due this year. They're seven fifty dollars a piece. Chief, um, I know, I think we probably go through this every year with the copier. Any, do we lease them or buy them? Uh, this is purchasing them. We purchased the last one. Uh, and then we also have, you have to pay the monthly plan that goes along with it. Even purchasing it? Yes. Have, has anyone looked into probably the leasing of it and then paying by the We actually have that. We have that price also. I don't have that with me, but I have uh, both prices, the full purchase or the um, the lease. Do you happen to know if it's less or? It, it, it's less to lease, isn't it? It's, it's less to lease, you know, per year. Uh, this is the full cost up front, and then the lease is over, I believe, a three-year period. Yeah, it would be a three-year right. lease. Yeah, and, and, and you pay a certain overage. It yes. Over. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. I mean, that's that's one of the things we'll have to have a discussion where we want mm -hmm. if we want to yeah. lease them. Yeah. It, my my preference yeah. is like that you know because <laughs> these on on the police side and the admin side, this is the backbone to the operation. I mean, these things oh, are yeah. used yeah. every second. Yeah. Certainly, no doubt about. Yeah. And about three four years down the road, really. Um, you know they start showing their age and it's when you build a lease into your budget it's just a constant number right and this is why i was thinking this is what we did before they come in in three years they change it change out them out just yep. for a yeah. nominal increase in lease yep. cost and if you happen to go over your allocated amount well because of an emergency sure well you pay for that but other than that all servicing and everything's included in that so yes it's probably logistically it's probably a uh mm -hmm. You wait, you know, certainly something to look into. Okay? Sure, either either one of them is fine. We got prices on both. Um, did I share that with you? Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. I shared that with Troy also. Okay, uh, there was two different machines we went out and tested them and stuff like that. And we like the uh, the biz hub was a seemed like a more sturdy machine. It's the same one that we have, it's just an upgraded model. You know, we've had ours for three or four years, and, yeah. and they just won't service them anymore. They won't come out, they won't clean them, they won't fix them, they won't. They'll sell you the toner, but that's it. It's a great and business. No more parts. Yeah. It's all, and uh, and there's parts. no <laughs> value to the machine when you're done. Mm. Which is, you know, we'll find another, maybe the library or, you know, fire department. <laughs> 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 you lease yours. Yeah. Yeah. Get a baseball bat, go beat yeah. it up. <laughs> yeah. uh, those are pretty much the highlights on um, 4210. So you're talking about a total of 38889 increase, is that Yes, 2%, 2.4. Questions from the board? So you're going for one car this year? Yes. And that's the full cost, 45000 So what, what that, thing? yeah, so what that's going to do, Steve, is it's going to <coughs> outfit a brand new car, completely outfitted. It's going to take um, the captain's vehicle, move that over to... Um, the detail line, taking the old cruiser and making that the captain's, and that's outfitting both of them. That's soup to nuts. Is the captain driving a subpar vehicle? His his vehicle has you have ninety something thousand on it. Ninety three thousand. Ninety three thousand. So it's perfect to go right into detail. We'll take that other uh, frontline car that's past its limit as far as that to ad admin. What's that got for it? We would anticipate at that time it would be seventy-five to eighty thousand. But you wouldn't have to outfit it, right? Because it's already outfitted. We, we would take off the lettering. There's some. Of the, we will take the um, some of the equipment and it'll go into the new vehicle. We'll take the cage out of it and, and repurpose that for the new uh, cruiser. So we don't have to rebuy that. <coughs> take the lights off the top, re repurpose that. He would just need the low pro lights that just go on uh, the low pro vehicles instead of the full light bar, which is substantially less. You should make them all like that. Right? I tell you what, you should see some of those, those black graphics 
where the car's all blacked out until like headlights oh, hit it. Police. Well, yeah, wow. It, it, and it's scotch lighted, or so you can't yes. see it until all of a sudden you're yep. like, uh-oh. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a few people have uh, found out the hard way. Mm-hmm. Not me, of course. <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> no, I'm just coughing. Yeah. Yeah. So in the chief's budget, everyone's, as far as salaries, uh, like he said, it's either union contract or employment contract is one employee the administrative assistant which is going to be part of the uh, the wage adjustment that we'll be discussing okay. so when you're saying overtime for court you're not kidding yeah and and what I do um, Steve is we go over <coughs> last year's numbers and basically like a matrix of what do the sergeants normally get for overtime what do the patrolmen get what do the master patrolmen get and then we take that average and we break it out of those um, those separate lines, and that's how we base our overtime. Uh, you'll see some of the other overtime has gone down. I guess, all right, because I'm ignorant to it, I have no clue. Mm -hmm. Why doesn't the prosecutor do that? He does. He saves us. If you remember before, we were paying forty or fifty thousand dollars a year. Right. Well, now that's going up, I'm I'm trying to figure out. Yeah. Well, it's, you because know, because people don't uh, plea out on a case, so you have to go to trial. Okay. Some of it is county attorney driven. With uh, and that's when the officer has to be involved. Has to be there. Got it. Okay. Uh, just like um, when the county attorney has a felony case, it's it's out of our hands. It's now the county attorney handling you know handling it. So any felony cases go up to you know the superior court. Okay. So this is. Fixed line budget, correct? Except for the administrative system. Yeah, and and one other point too, the prosecutor's contract is correct in December, so we're yeah. going to have to um, begin negotiating a new contract for the prosecutor. Yes. As long as he wants one. What's that? As long as he wants one. I don't think he does. He does. <coughs> okay, the will of the board. I guess we have to wait until we have our final number, right? We probably Salary. should be consistent. Yep. Okay. okay. Any okay. other questions for this? For this part. Nope. Okay. Over to police support. Um. PD wages for dispatchers. That's uh, union contract driven. PD wages dispatch coverage. Um. That is showing the uh, 22 days of earned time that they get for a total of 352 hours. Substantially less than what we had before when both of the dispatchers were maxed out at is it 40 or 50 days a year, whatever it was. So that's, uh, that's adequately caught into this, into this uh, budget. Um, we took out the PD overtime for dispatcher, we brought that down to zero. We found that we weren't using that, so we dropped that down to zero. Um, uniforms, health insurance, um, PD dispatch service that hasn't changed. Um, the sheriff, the sheriff has kept that same rate for probably the last seven or eight years, uh, and it doesn't appear that there's going to be any change in that. We would have already received notification. So total increase of $9,728. Uh, that is a fixed line because they're under contract. There's no other employees other than them. There's two employees there, right? Correct. $5,800 increase is projected for insurance. Wow. I just want to point that out of a $9,700 <laughs> increase. <laughs> Um, this is a fixed line budget, so I'll make a motion that we approve 4210.50 police support in the amount of $160,516. Motion by Mr. Perry. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Schaefer. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Mo uh, abstain? Motion carries 400. And we're going to animal 
control now? Yes. What account is that one? Uh, 4414.10. Okay. <coughs> nice if everything was grouped together. There we go. Oh. Wow, it went down. You like that, huh? Oh. You're not going to like my first question, though. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be short-lived, Mr. Lemire. Why'd you have to Let's play? make a motion. <laughs> <laughs> I'll accept <Quick>. it. <laughs> I'll accept it. Okay, under um, animal control officer salary, I've done this every year for probably the past 14 years. I beg of the board to please increase the stipend for uh, Mr. Pylon. I have looked at his, um, he has not received a raise. As far as our records go back, 2001, he hasn't received any increase in his salary. I looked at our personnel policy um, of 2014. He would be $4 an hour less than our very first step. So what I would what I would like to do is to, to increase his stipend, so that um, we're competitive with the market. We looked at uh, Londonderry, Hudson, um, Merrimack, Merrimack, and what their officers are getting paid. We're not asking to for him to go to that level. We're looking at he generally works about 20 hours a week. I was going to say, how is his pay based? He's, he's, it's just a stipend, so what he gets is 200 bucks a week. That's it. That's it. And you want to go to what? What I'd like to do is have, have it go to 14560 would be the stipend instead of the 10741 So it brings him right around $14 an hour instead of the 1032 is what he makes now. And that brings him to... If you look at our personnel policy, it would be uh, position one, the ending pay, which is fourteen twenty-five. So again, you said he hasn't received an increase in the stipend since two thousand one. Correct. And probably, before, I have records back to ninety-eight, but I remember there was there was a time when um, he was using his own car, but wasn't getting uh, the the dollar amount for that and then the board changed that and gave him the the 2000 or 2400 a year mm -hmm. so uh but as far as his stipend that's never gone up and chief i think the call volume has significantly increased yeah we have town grows yeah yeah we have 1800 dogs now i mean back in the day we only had like three or four hundred you know there's a substantial amount of work he puts in to notice these people get them to court and you know and stuff like that to to get the people to pay the, you know, the fines or the registrations and stuff. There's a lot of paperwork that he does. He is, he's a great employee. He's been here for 20 years. Whenever there's a, an, a dog bite or anything, I mean, he comes right out. He'll take the dog up to the, um, you know, if it needs to be checked for rabies and stuff like that, you know, he takes time out of his other job to do that for us. You know, he's, he's a very valuable employee, and I'd hate to lose him for such short money, you know, especially when you have, um, you know, Hudson, Merrimack, Londonderry paying substantially more. And he lives in, you know, Hudson. And if their animal control officer guy, le you know, left, it'd be easy just to jump over there and, you know, kind of leave us stranded. You know. Like I said, he's a very loyal employee. He's, you know, does, does a great job. Does he, I mean, he does obviously dogs and stuff, but... I don't know anything about animal control, but does he do wild animals too? I mean, there's, there's, yes, there's if a there's raccoon in my yard. Yeah, if own. if he's not, you know, we generally our line officers will handle that. But if the if the animal bites somebody or something like that, Jerry comes in, he does the follow up, he make he brings the you know they take the head off the animal and bring it up to Concord. He does all of that, does all the follow up for. Um, uh, you know, to the doctor's office and the people like, you know, if they had their kid bit by a neighbor's dog or something like that, he handles all of that stuff for us. Okay. Yeah. What's and the, and he, does, he does a great job for us. What's the going rate in surrounding towns? Uh, right now, Hudson, they have a full-time ACO, which is twenty three thirty eight an hour. <coughs> they have a part-time ACO is uh, 1561, which is 24 hours a week. Uh, Merrimack has a part-time guy that's uh, 1591. 
Uh, Londonderry is a part-time guy. That's eighteen seventy-nine. Would you still keep it as a stipend? You, right? That'd be up to the because board. Um, right now, he's a stipend. He doesn't work. You know, it's just paid on a I, correct. I think. I think that with this, it just kind of levels out the pay because there's probably some weeks he does twenty hours. There's probably some weeks he does fifteen. There's probably correct. some he does twenty-five. Correct. Especially during the season. You know, when it's, when it's time to collect and uh, send people to court and stuff like that, he's very busy. You know? Well, I'll float it out there. Okay. I'm going to make a motion to raise line 128 to $15,000. Second. Moved by Mr. Perry, seconded by Mr. Bork to raise line 128 to $15,000 as a stipend. For a stipend for the, end. For the um, animal control officer. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Four zero zero. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. And that was it. I don't believe there's any other. There was a decrease of four hundred dollars. <laughs> See, you started out right. Right. So, well, do we want to vote this bottom line? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I, I I just wanted to say. I mean. I went a little higher than your request because I was just trying to round the numbers off. Sure, sure. And if it's been that long, I mean, it's re sure. ridiculous. It's sure, sure. Okay. So. It's yes. an $88 a week raise. And yeah, I know. Right. It's really not that much. Right. And he, he has, I don't ever, have never heard a complaint about that. No, he's he's very diligent. He's a, he's a worker. He really is. And, um, you yeah, the paperwork he does is phenomenal. I make a motion that we move line 4414.10, animal control, for a bottom line number of $19,415. Moved by Mr. Perry, seconded by Mr. Bork. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries 400. Well, one of yours is out of the way. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you for your time. <coughs> Next time we'll text you when we're ready for you to come in. Okay. All right. <laughs> Sounds good. Deputy. Gentlemen, good evening. Good evening. Four two two zero point one zero. Where would you like to start? Four two two. At the end of the meeting. <laughs> it works for me. <laughs> I know you want to do ambulance, then fire, then. Why don't we do fire? Entrance. We're there. So we'll start okay. with fire. 4220. 4220.10. 4 and like the others, maybe you can highlight the changes. Sure. Um, increase in line 110, contractual. Increase in 120 for. Um, <coughs> Mechanic, um, some additional, I think it's an additional hour a week or thereabouts based on uh, um, past history and quite honestly that what he's saving us in maintenance expenses um, far out outweigh that hour or two increase. Um, training wages um, essentially puts back the 5000 that was cut by the budget committee last year. Um, right now, we are about 12% uh, remaining in that training line for the balance of the year. So will you exceed it this year? Um, that's a fair statement. Okay. Uh, we, and I think the change is, quite honestly, we've, uh, we've put several individuals through both Fire 1 and we have 3 and Fire 2 right now. Um, we, we, have a, we had a little bit of a change in uh, personnel last year. Um, and we have some newer folks that are very much active and want to learn and so forth. So our trainings have been much better attended over the, the course of this year than in the past. So, so yeah, we will exceed this year. And, um, you know, it kind of puts us back to what I had based last year's numbers on. Um, um, fire overtime, um, I believe that is based on the adjustments it's probably a step increase yes 
Um, and and I think some that was that was a line that was cut last year too, if I recall. Um, health insurance. Um, we took a five thousand dollar hit last year, so I'm assuming this is that plus the ten percent. The ten percent. Um, computer software is down uh, the 3500 for the one-time expense for the the bridge between Hudson's dispatch software and our firehouse uh, offset slightly by an increase in our firehouse software contract dispatch services is up slightly um, pre-employment screening is up we now have to do uh, fingerprint background checks for any of our personnel who become licensed as EMTs or, or increase their level of EMS certification um, due to a uh, new law that took effect January 1st. Um, instructional service or instructor services 391 is up uh, some increases in costs of programs uh, at the fire academy as well as uh, increases in our contractual agreements for our fire and EMS uh, contractors. Electricity's up. Um, heating is up. Dues and subscriptions is up just slightly due to increases in dues for, um, I believe that was the uh, Sohegan Swiftwater team is now a regional asset and therefore there's a basically a $50 insurance policy a year for us to have that asset available. So given the the value of it, it's um, it's well worth the, the fifty dollars. Uh, repair and maintenance uh, is the biggest jump. Um, that is uh, six thousand dollars that was cut last year, be, um, to basically to restore the radio replacement program to the forty thousand originally budgeted. We cut six out of it last year because we had replaced the Hudson radio with um, uh, two thousand. 15 year-end funds uh, we encumbered. Um, that 6,000 puts it back to the 40 for next year, as well as um, $30,000 to replace the rescue tools on the rescue truck. What are the rescue tools? The Jaws of Life, yeah. essentially. Cutters, spreaders, and RAM. We just uh, cut the purchase order today for the combination tool that uh, we're replacing on engine four. Um, and then the goal is next year to replace, and those are how old? He bought them, so pretty old. You're kidding. <laughs> yeah, no. So it, they, quite honestly, they're not going to cut today's vehicles. Um, they just don't have the uh, the power to cut them, the, the force. Um, so we were going to do that originally as a warrant article, um, but um, as we'll kind of get into, we've also pulled a warrant article. But I, I really don't want to delay that another year, so... Um, question, Kevin, are you good? No. Okay. Um, vehicle fuel, um, up due to both usage and I guess we're holding our price. Although. We're holding the price. Or, yeah. <laughs> That's interesting considering the price and the amount it's increased in the last two weeks. But um, um, due to usage, you know, I'll defer questions to Troy because he, he keeps track of that. So um, Is that locked? Do we do a? No, we lock don't. No, it's a cash okay. purchase, so. <clears throat> Why don't we lock it? Or because we? when we did, we were paying 30 cents to 40 oh, cents oh, a gallon more. more. Oh, more. Well, that's a good reason. It took a while for me, I guess, <laughs> to finally get out of that. Uniforms mm -hmm. and accessories. If you recall, last year I had put money in the budget to start a, a dress uniform <laughs> program. Budget committee cut it. So this is a, a scaled back version, basically half of what I had asked for last year. Um, is back in this year, so we can always start the, the program. Um, protective clothing basically reflects the increase in costs. We see about a three to four percent increase a year on on that type of equipment, so that's that's what that is. Uh, medical supplies, uh, kind of a drastic increase. We are already um, over budget uh, in that line, and we haven't even started um, our fall events up the street um, but right now we're uh, well this says we're uh, seven hundred dollars over budget this year do we pay for our Narcan no uh, typically no 
We typically get it through the hospital. Okay. So I don't think we have there may be a um, what it, it we have to swap it out. So be, right. there are times we actually have to go to the hospital to get because mm -hmm. depending on what the ambulance has on it, it can't afford to give us yeah. the replacement and then leave them short should they need it in route or um, so we do occasionally have to go to the hospital. But as long as we have a patient to tie the administration to, a patient gets billed for it. Um, but uh, again, we really haven't, um, we're seeing, a, like everybody, a higher percentage of medical calls and, and, and um, you know, we're seeing the opioid issues. So, um, well, it may be a little hard to believe, but we are seeing it. Um, fire department equipment purchase, slight decrease. Um, we uh, are this year changing over from buying a uh, actual handheld thermal imaging camera. Um, as we have the past two years, technology is, has um, really, it's incredible that the cameras are now in the mask. Um, and and uh, we just uh, um, purchased nine uh, camera kits to install in our mask because our masks are only, our, our breathing apparatus is only a year and a half, two years, just coming up on two years old. It's new enough we can retrofit them with this technology. Basically what it does is it gives, not to the extent or the, the uh, resolution that a handheld camera does, but it gives the firefighter wearing that mask kind of a, a thermal imaging view um, just down um, to the right uh, of their nose, if you will, within is about a one inch square monitor. Um, and and it, I, I, it's amazing. I mean, if you had asked me 30 I've years ago. I've tried one on myself. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it's so, pretty amazing. We're, uh, and, and that's the way we're going. They're already talking about upgrades, firmware upgrades and updates. Um, nobody will really admit what's coming next, but um, from what I've gathered from, from sales reps and talking with some of the uh, the designers of this equipment at the at the uh, fire chief's conference down in Charlotte is uh, air monitoring is coming next. So our firefighters will be able to monitor the environment they're in. Uh, it gives them the heat temperature that they're dealing with in the room. So we're looking to basically start to outfit the masks over the next four or five years, all with this technology. Um, I think it's safe to say in, in as our standards change and, and the NFPA updates the the uh, breathing apparatus standards, it's, become, it's gonna become a standard requirement in the mask. So uh, the $1,200 to upgrade a mask. So it, it just, I was shocked when I, I heard the price. I mean, we paid $10,000 for a handheld camera and we're putting six, uh, I'm sorry, what do we buy, nine? nine? Nine mini cameras, if you will, for $10,000. So that means that, you know, at least one firefighter on each truck to start will have that technology in their mask as well as one firefighter be carrying the, the um, higher resolution cameras that we bought over the past two years. So, so that's that's uh, still in the budget, um, but we just dropped it down from the 11,000 to 9,000. We'll buy, uh, I think it's 80 a year for 9,000. Um, uh, equipment, lease, equipment, equipment leases is our copier. Usage of the copier is, is uh, um, again, it's our mainstay. It's really our only printer at the firehouse. Um, um, did I miss a page? Or do I think I missed a page? <coughs> Questions from the board? No, I'm not quite done yet. <laughs> I missed a page. Sorry. Uh, Leases. I think you're done. I am. Yeah. Wow, look at that. I am. I knew you were done. Members of the board. <laughs> Questions for the chief. Mr. Schaefer, you all set? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Mr. Perry? I think we all know that if I have a question, everybody knows. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure of no, in case set. you were having this, you know. I, I, I think it goes without saying. I mean, we tried to minute. keep it as lean as we could, again, because of the, you know, the desire to move forward with the station. Um, if I was really comfortable pushing the rescue tools off another year, I would. But 
I, you know, we're going to have brand new technology on one truck and something that really won't cut the cars that are out on the road today on the other truck. So, and the NO2 we 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 are, have just purchased is really a get started tool. It's not going to do the. It doesn't have the capabilities that the full set of tools on the rescue have. So. That okay. thirty is that a, is that an actual number? Yeah, I actually have the quote with me. Um, there's, there's there's a link to the quote. Yeah. On that particular quote, you'll see a six hundred and eighty-two dollar AC adapter. We're actually buying that to go with the the tool we are buying now, so we'll already have had that. So. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. There's a couple of items in this budget that would be great if we had end of year funds. Oh yeah. So I would just, agree. We just need to think about that. We we'll have to remember that. If we have, if we if there's a few items in this budget that would be great to use in the end of year funds if we had them. Oh. Yeah. So it's something we all need to remember. But with that said, I'll make a motion to move budget 4220.10 fire. Do we want to lose salaries? We still got salaries are in. Not all. No. No. Our call line isn't going to do it. Okay, thank you. I'm not going to move it. Okay, let's go to ambulance. Uh, ambulance, no change, Troy. 4215. Yep, the one before five. No change. Well, it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's a little difficult right now because about this time, we'll, we'll be done with our budget review, but in October, we'll receive. Um, a bill from the town of Hudson which will reflect their newly adopted uh, budget because their fiscal year starts July 1st um, and you can see for the the actual service the first line I did a little historical numbers there and in 2016 the actual expense was 51,293 so our 57.5 was the number we had last year that still may be a good number for 2018 uh, we may miss it uh, by a little bit um, but like I said by the time this budget goes to budget committee that's when we'll we'll know what well we certainly good can vote it and <laughs> yeah. if we have to revisit it yeah. well, it's, it's not and it's just so you know it's um, it's it's not a fixed number because it's, right. it's the contract that we have is based on um, a percentage of the calls and right. then there's some formula with their annual adopted budget so the number can be different every quarter based on the calls that this is Literally. our best yeah. guesstimate for now. I was going to say, are we better off not so that we have a true number when we do vote it? It's certainly up to you. I don't care either way. I think it's I safe to say it's going to change a little bit. I'm, right, I'm so a little concerned about. of some activity over there in Hudson with the, you know, yeah, the budget I, thing. I, I'd like to say it's not going to change, but I don't think that's a All right, what, we'll pretty fair off. statement. So we'll, we'll hold off and vote it once. All right, let's go to hydrants. I'd like to say there's no change there, but... Oh, my God. What did you do? <laughs> Why do you have to have all these... Hydrants? For the record, we haven't used any of them. <laughs> well, I hope you um, don't have to. That means I, so know, I, I think it goes without saying we added 42 hydrants over the course of the last year. Um, and, and this isn't even all of them, right? No, this is only so a percentage there is of them. one thing that was just pointed out to me today, and I forgot about it, um, the page road development so there's there's a good possible i don't know how many hydrants are there but there's about another eight to uh, twelve yeah. between the two and those yeah. we will be built for january 1st because they're they're live yeah they've yeah, been they, live they for about a month not done by the, as far as the townhouses by like the, the townhouses the, the townhouses are looking to occupy by november and at the november. latest yeah and then they're going to start working on the uh subdivision they still don't have a building up yet. Yeah, they well, do. Yeah, they do. Oh, they do. One, the townhouses? One, one building that's not up. They just started it. Uh, it's, uh, is yeah, is that the, se the seventh one? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so there. But, I mean, the water, the fire protection has to be in before they really even start. Mm -hmm. So so that's why it's been live for two months. No, longer than that. Three months now? Yeah. Uh, so here's my so question. Is why, why is the city of Manchester hydrant at $640? <laughs> the, the when, you, when you take our 241 hydrants that are at 1228. Same reason the Manchester bills are a fraction of 
what the pedichuk goes are. They're so they bill, um, yeah, they, they, they bill, I was just brought up the bill, and they bill on a quarterly basis. So on a quarterly basis, Manchester charges $153. I think what I budgeted was 160 on a quarterly basis because they're going to have a small increase, they told me. You're going to switch to Manchester yeah, water. Manchester. <laughs> yeah. I wish it was that easy. <laughs> they won't I was let you. so close. It's a franchise. So close. It's a franchise. They, they wouldn't come across the bridge. <laughs> the culvert. Um, would you care to wait on this also until we get the page wrote? Yeah, because we need to pick up those hydrants. Uh, That's significant money. That? You sure? You sure this only includes okay. the north end ones? Any this other this only does the north end, yeah. Okay, on to emergency management. Emergency management, the only adjustment there is uh, the uh, increase in the hazmat district um, dues, $250. Make a motion to remove approved 4290.10 emergency management for 14522 Moved by Mr. Perry. Second. Seconded by Mr. Schaefer. 14522 for account 4290.10 Emergency it management. Should, it should say 2018 up top, and it doesn't. Oh, it did. Yeah. <laughs> Can we change it right Mine does. Oh, up here. Okay, I see it. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? All abstain? No. One abstention. Motion carries three zero one. Thank you. Oh, how about so, warrant articles? Yes. We want to talk about those while the chief is here, Mr. Brown? Yes, we can. Uh, I will let you know that the in the conversation I had with the chief today, he um, he reconsidered the uh, utility vehicle and we've we've removed that. Um, as one of the one of the Warren articles. Okay. So let's see. I need to get back into my. I'd rather get the tools than the truck. <laughs> so. I mean, it's so basically, other than the fire station. Correct. Now, what are we doing as far as the ten thousand we took out of the <coughs> apparatus? Are we not doing anything with that next year? Replacement. I brought, yeah, that's, I mean, I think the only reason I ask, I, the only reason I ask is because we, we did our pump testing back uh, six or eight weeks ago, and um, they found a couple of concerns with one and four pumps. Yes. That they may need to be rebuilt not too far down the road to, mm. to about the tune of 16.5 apiece. So there is enough money in that fund if we have to do both those trucks in between now and the end of next year, but that will leave it pretty much dry. What did you do? We established it at fifty thousand. We established it at fifty. Took, we just pulled ten. We just pulled five ten out of it the, uh, for the combi tool. Uh, so I mean, I'm I'm good for next year because honestly, we don't see any other thing else major, but um, and we did just go through inspections and and um, came away unscathed. So we do have some, some um, I was kind of waiting to see where, where we were going to be at the end of inspections and where we're at currently. Um, right now, we're only at 50% expended for the year, so that's a positive sign given that we've already done inspections. Um, we may be able to either do something with some of that, uh, encumber it to, re to work on the pumps. or I mean, nothing's going to fail catastrophically overnight but when we come around to next year there's only so many nuts and bolts they can turn to, to keep the pump within its required gallons per minute and so forth so and that 16.5 is assuming everything goes you know smooth no no issues once they pull the pump down and if anything's scored or cracked or whatever it, the price is going to jump significantly so Okay, any other questions for the chief? Thank you, gentlemen. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. Troy, do you want to discuss the other Warren article? Sure. 
All right. So obviously the number numbers will change. Um, I'm not sure how many articles the planning board will have. But right now, Article 3 is just a res uh, reserved for the fire station bond. Article 4 is the operating budget. Article 5 is the full-time police officer. Thank you, guys. Nope. All set. Have a good one, guys. All right, thank you. Oh, we, we didn't ask the chief to speak to that tonight. I know. We forgot to do that. Speak to the full time police officer. Oh, police chief. Yeah. I mean, he is. Yeah, our, well, the that, police right? officer, it was, again, it was, uh, it was his understanding, my understanding that the, the plan that was discussed with the selectmen and the budget committee last year was that we'd ask for a full time officer in 2017 and they would ask for another one in 2018. And so that's why this article is, is here. Article six gets dropped then, right? Because Jack agreed to get rid of the um, road improvement projects. Oh no, he didn't. He didn't. Agree. No, he didn't. We didn't ask him to. Do it. We asked him to pick one. I did. <laughs> oh, okay. But we did. Uh, see, I always think. Yeah. <laughs> Article six is. Uh, it still continues to raise that extra two hundred thousand dollars to sort of match the block grant funding. And we've discussed the roads that we we're planning on doing this year. The highway department, Article 7 is the plow truck lease purchase. With those figures are, will be revised, right? By the time we come to vote on these. On the lease. Did he mention the total was 140 something? Well, what happens, um, so I took uh, his higher quote of the 150 for the Liberty International and I gave it to the person that actually gave the lease agreement on his pickup truck. And so um, these numbers here factor in the interest costs. So that's why if you, if you uh, purchase the vehicle and equipped it for 150, it costs you a total of 166, 728 in interest in principle. Yeah, he told us 141. His, he had two proposals. He had one for 141 and another one at 150. So I chose the, the higher the two proposals so that's worst case what's that that's worst case yeah how much sig well is there any significant savings if you drop the years if we don't lease it or just no, purchase if you it? lease it for five years instead of eight or six years well, instead saving of saving on interest i don't know i can you yeah i would think you would save but the I, don't know if be significant. I know that like when you look at vehicles Right now, you can get virtually free interest for three years. Yeah. Right. And then four years, a little more, five years. But then when you go over five, it starts jumping. Hmm. So that's why I asked. I can have, um, they can generate this quote instantly. <laughs> so if you want, I can take a look at a five-year lease. Yeah, I mean, five or six, just, just see if there's a difference. Yeah. If we can cut the interest in half by dropping a couple of years, it might be worth it. If we can't, it might be worth it to leave it as is. Yeah, I chose eight because I was I was looking at it. It's about half the uh, life expectancy of the truck. Mm -hmm. That's why I chose eight. The library um, wage implementation. I don't know what the dollar amount is yet, but I do know that they'll be uh, seeking that um, third year implementation funding. Human services um, still just got a couple um, agencies that. Um, I don't have the proposals from them, and I'll populate those dollar amounts. Last year, we didn't honor um, all the all the requests, so we didn't even pass. It didn't pass either. Well, I think it did. I don't think it did. No, twenty twenty four hundred dollars. I don't think it did. I'll have to double check. Um. Okay, so Article Ten, the Town Earn Time Accrual Expendable Trust Fund. So we have, by the time we transfer the $60,000 that we raised last year, we have not transferred those funds yet. We kind of wait till the end of the year. Um, so there's about $30,000 in the fund. <coughs> we'll roll over another 60 and probably uh, um, next couple weeks. But 
what I'm saying is we have about a $75,000 liability. And that comes from about $25,000 from all of our employees. And then we also know that we have an employee uh, that's going to be retiring soon and has a large amount of accrued time. So that's why I was looking to try to maintain this funding at $60,000 as we have in the last two years. Building Systems Trust Fund, uh, we have a balance right now of 30,000. And, you know, we have um, 30,000. And I don't think that's accounting for <coughs> the, uh, whatever work's going to be done down there at the uh, fire station Leachfield project. And the Albuquerque bike path, this is um, an article. It's just kind of like a housekeeping one. I'm not sure if, if the selectmen are looking to really, you know, have uh, reduced the number of articles this year. This is something that it's, a no, it's not a cost impact to the taxpayers. It can remain um, right now. It's just a fun. And my purpose here was to get it off the current books, get it into a trust fund so that it would be set there, you know, um, indefinitely and held in trust by the trustees but if we if we remove this if you know it has no no tax impact but again just by just wanting to eliminate some articles no harm done the funds are not going to disappear i mean this doesn't really change anything because it changes have... nothing other than it gets it off our i don't think that we should have all these funds laying around you know in the general fund they should really um they should either lapse or they should be transferred to uh, capital reserve expendable trust funds in this case um, we know that this fund these were the balance of the stimulus funding grant that was used for uh, the construction of this of the uh, sidewalk so the the funds need to be uh, used for this purpose I removed, we had articles, uh, Brent, in the last meeting, we had some discussion about um, establishing or raising some money for the, our legal defense, the PFOA mm -hmm. legal defense, creating a, a legal expendable trust fund. My sense from the board was that there wasn't really any interest in that this year. Plus, we're also setting ourselves up for a no means no situation. Right. And so I've removed those. Okay. Um, we removed the... Um, utility the fire truck utility um, the library last time you guys saw this the library i had a placeholder for their um, earn time expendable trust fund and they've informed me that they don't they will not be uh, seeking additional funding for their, that trust fund this year okay so we will um await further information yeah. So our next meeting, we'll you know we'll have to um, we'll need to vote on these and decide which ones we're gonna we're gonna keep or not. No. <laughs> because we'll be going to budget committee. Uh, the I still don't see why. See now, we say this, and this is the problem that we have. We vote on them, and then last year when we made a change, they were all upset. Years passed. We waited until January to vote them in. And we just made them wait. Mm -hmm. And then they didn't argue and complain about when we made a change at the end. So what's I think well I think what's provide? driving it what's driving it this year is um, they they need to know because all the articles play a role in the calculation of the tax cap, they want to know what the, the articles tax cap's are blown be. anyway. Uh, when yeah. you had the fire when the you fire had hydrants. hydrants. <laughs> the fire hydrants are blowing the tax cap. I, I know that. So they can't recommend the budget anyway. Right. That's a good point. I, I, I didn't right. think that. Fire hydrants are blowing right. the tax cap. I mean, so at this I mean, point, what are they going to vote on? It's a, well, no. There's <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot of moving factors in the tax cap. I mean, if you look, um, go back to your budget. Open up. If you open up. Is there up, any movement in Concord to, to help us with that? To change no, I talked. And I talked to NHMA um, about. I was talking uh, with them about another subject matter. I just kind of brought this up. And um, they, their initial instinct was that this would be a huge battle to try to 
change the language. Uh, for so this can law. we change our own language to make it apply only for the operating budget? No, no, we're, we've adopted an RSA and the voters have approved a wow. tax cap. Okay. And I mean, we can always attempt, but I guess I was told that it would be a pretty tough battle for the people that are out there. You know, <clears throat> wrote the law for tax cap, now we're trying to figure out a way to get around it by changing the law. Right. <laughs> but, All right, well, let's put these on, on hold for further future. For, and, and you do make a point, Steve, that uh, yeah. you know, we may want to wait until we're completely sure that we have all of the mm -hmm. information. And, and just we'll let them know. It's, it's not that it's a stalling tactic. We just want to get it right. Yeah. So um, they're just I don't mind telling them that. Yeah. And, OK. Okay, any other questions or comments? Okay. On to the next item. Where am I? Building and fire. Okay. Building and fire inspection services. Conservation yep. Commission. Um, oh, that was the river. Just uh, during the past several years, members of this board and previous boards um, have been studying operations and reviewing proposals and options for streamlining um, both code enforcement and building operations. Um, over the past several months, I asked Mr. Brown to work with the fire chief and the code enforcement officer to, re to review the application of the codes and research options that could simplify the permitting process and application of the fire, life, safety, and building codes. The intent um, is to offer residents and businesses doing business in Litchfield a path that is seamless and result in a one-stop operation, while in the long term also provide an increase in the level of service at no increase in cost to the taxpayer. While researching the many options, one that stood out as the most feasible for a town our size, and one option that several towns have or are in the process of adopting is the model that combines all of the code enforcement and health functions into a division within the fire department. As both agencies conduct inspections, issue permits, and provide life safety functions, it seems reasonable to place these functions under one agency, um, eliminating duplicitous functions and enhancing the services provided by the departments. While any change you recognize will require detailed planning for logistical changes uh, and updated job descriptions, uh, I've asked the fire chief for proposals in these areas and they are currently being worked on. Updating operations and changes are, are always challenging, uh, but in this case, I feel confident that the stakeholders will work to ensure that this becomes a model of efficiency for all concerned. So tonight, my fellow board members, I'm asking you um, to adopt the framework, just the framework at this point for this change, so that we may move forward to create a model that will serve the citizens of Litchfield well in the years to come. And consequently, I'd ask for a motion to approve the consolidation of code enforcement, building, health, and zoning application functions into the fire department under the direction of the fire chief. Effective Sunday, September 17th, 2017. So I'll accept the motion if there's one to be had. So the only question I have is without a model for the job description and the, the process of how it goes through, is it right to make it effective immediately? Or is it right to make it effective well, once we come up with that model? Well, because... I'm just asking. Sure. Right now, there's no change right. anticipated. So um, there's no change to the personnel functions. As we move forward, we can work on the job description um, that doesn't re Require, since there isn't any change at this point, this is a, a, a logistical issue, a personnel issue that we move forward and work with the stakeholders as we go along and see how the logistical functions are coming into play. Okay. 
Okay. So I, uh, the fire chief is working on <coughs> that now, but uh, you know, as we said, we don't have to worry about it at this point because there's really being no change. There's no change in personnel, there's no change in functions. All our changes is a logistical move. It's just sliding under the direction of the fire right. chief. Mm -hmm. And then at that point, everything else will mold, he'll mold. Right. He'll mold, will approve. Yes. Yes. Everything has to come back step by step in the process. Anyone else? No. I make a motion to approve the consolidation of code enforcement, building, health, zoning, and zoning application functions into the fire department under the direction of the fire chief effective Sunday? September 17th. September 17th, 2017. Moved by Mr. Perry. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Schaefer. Discussion? Questions? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Abstain? Aye. Motion carries 3-0-1. Thank you, gentlemen. This is, will be an ongoing process, which will be involved intimately and with the stakeholders, and uh, we'll keep the public informed. Thank you. All right, next item of business. Jeff Lane Recreation Park, Irrigation Well, Mr. Brown. All right, so um, Mr. Schaefer wears uh, another hat as uh, a volunteer trying to build uh, the new baseball fields at Jeff Lane. So he, he made me aware that um, you know, both both uh, Mr. Schaefer and I had met with um, a local contractor in town and no no big surprise, Continental Paving, Rick Chabernau uh, has done a tremendous job at Jeff, Jeff Lane this spring. Um, and without their work, I don't think we'd be where we're at right now. No, no, no. Uh, impossible. So w one of the discussions we had in the spring was um, digging a, a dug well uh, for irrigation purposes. And to date, we don't have that in place. We do believe that um, in the next couple of weeks, maybe, um, or less, that it's possible we might be able to get the dug, dug well in place. He wants to but, do it this week. Yeah. That's so, what he says. but just in case, um, we wanted to be prepared because we are just we have a very short period of time here to be able to get grass seed down, get it to germinate, um, so that we can you know be playing on the fields in the spring. So if anything goes wrong, we don't know if the dug well is going to produce enough water. We wanted um, to line up a, a contractor to install uh, a well. So we reached out to Skillings and Sons. Um, they were um, they've been working with us for the last six eight months, um, and they have indicated that their schedule right now um, they could actually be available to start digging the well in about two weeks. We're scheduled to meet with Skillings and Sons on the site tomorrow morning. So we're looking to get permission from the Board of Selectmen to do a couple of things. One, to contract with Skillings and Sons to install the uh, irrigation well if need be. And two, um, that we waive the purchasing policy requirements um, because this would be essentially, just because of the time constraints, um, a sole source. We would just go directly to Skillings and Sons and not get two other quotes. Skillings and Sons is aware that uh, we were going to be, you know, we were not uh, going out and getting other competitive quotes, and they were able to waive um, like their mobilization fee, um, so that would help reduce, you know, some of the costs. The um, can I talk or yeah, I, um, <clears throat> the yeah. well, <laughs> the odds of. Um, the odds of us having a dug well that work effectively are pretty good. Um, when we had some test wells done there um, last fall, um, we had three three up three chances. One company came in and did three different um, driven point well tries in different parts, and he hit he hit ledge at about twenty seven feet, solid clay through there. And I mean, we know that um, I don't know if they, well, I know it used to be a pond over there. We're, 
those fields are literally on a pond that the uh, Army Corps of Engineers filled in back in the 50s. Um, there's, a, there's a very high water table. You, when your kids were there, uh, you probably remember always walking through the wet topsoil. So knowing that... the road have a problem because of that? Yeah, yeah well, yeah, <laughs> obviously. Yeah, 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 I forgot now. We, we do have recent knowledge of that. Um, so, so my opinion is, is that I think that they're going to be successful with a dug well. Um, he wants to dig a hole in the ground as deep as he can, tile it in. All the water will make it, mitigate its way right into the, the well area. We'll pump it out and use that for irrigation. We don't have, with a driven point well, we just didn't have that type of flow because, you know, you're trying to suction it, you're trying to siphon it through a two-inch pipe. Uh, whereas with a, with a tiled cistern, more or less, it's, it's just finding its way in there, which it will. Um, but if there's failure, and, and you know, there's, there's a small chance, I want to make sure that we have a backup plan, and that would be skillings. Um, so that's, you know, the, the, that's really what's happening. Um, you basically, we're, I'm asking for a safety net. And if this fails for some reason, which if this man says that there's an opportunity to put a well in there, he's probably right. So uh, I'm not going to argue with him. I think that he's probably going to have some, you know, Rick will have some success putting in the well. But again. What's a dug well going to cost us? 10000 Really? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Free. Oh, Dugwell. No, Dugwell is no charge. No charge. But Skillings is going to put in an artesian well for okay. for ten thousand. Oh, but would he do the Dugwell first? No, no, we're not going to do both. We we're only we're looking for just a single water source. Rick will go in, dig, dig, do the Dugwell. I see. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no, I, 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 I didn't. Maybe I didn't phrase okay. it everything correctly enough. But he's going to come in and do it again. You know, he looked at the site. He's pretty confident he can find enough water for irrigation. And as I explained, it's clay. The water moves slow, but if you have a if you have a, a hole in the ground, the water will mitigate its way into it. Um, whereas if we if we have to go to Plan B, which would be an artesian well, we're looking at about ten thousand okay. dollars. So free or ten thousand? Yeah. And where would that? Let me count. Um, I have that in impact fees for that were designated to the Jeff Lane project. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you got it. You want? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, and, and honestly, I mean, if um, it, I, I don't want to do it, I don't want to have to spend the ten because I mean, they have other things that I want to do in the field. So, uh, um, that, you know, again, you're just helping me create a safety net. And again, in times of the essence, again, it, it, it's just that time of year. I mean, last year we were in the same situation, if you remember. Right. Um, so. That's that's where we're at right now. Is there a motion to me? Why wouldn't we get prices from others? Like I said, well, we've been talking with Skillings. Um, I mean, there's probably only one other company that we could potentially talk to, and that would be Northeast. Um, and again, it's just it's just. Somebody that knows the area that's been around. Uh, I mean, we can get pricing if you want us to. If you'd rather, it's going to slow down the process. So, uh, how, but if we authorize the expenditure, and if needed, you get quotations. Yeah. Um, and utilize the best price. But then, when we do that, we're going to have to do the process, advertise. Looking at weeks. I mean, yeah, you're just looking at at this threshold. We. Um, oh, so you're you're, you're looking oh, so at you're, competitive you're, you're, seal right, bid process. Yeah. All right. I'm not even worried about the policy as much as I'm worried about making sure there isn't another price out there that doesn't prove this one to be out of whack. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you know, if we didn't have to go through the the newspaper advertisement seal bid process, we could easily get probably one other company to give us a quote. Do you want me to get another company to do a quote? And that would make you feel better. Okay. Yeah. I can do that. <laughs> because that can be approved at the next meeting if, if the numbers jive. Yeah. That's two weeks away. That's because you're saying Mr. Shabno is talking next week. This week, hopefully, he said. Yeah. Yeah. 
wouldn't really hold you up, would it? Not if we have the numbers. Okay, so we're gonna hold hold up. <coughs> yep. Okay. Next item on the agenda. Okay. Recycling equipment grant uh, application. It's a con. It's a consent item. What's that? I didn't place that as a consent item. Oh, it was in the consent folder. Oh, I, I may have just stuck it in there. As, uh, Did we already and, and, and that's right. I didn't read it. So okay. Yeah. So this is. Um, Dave Mellon's aware of a grant program and whereas um, he thinks he has a really good shot at getting I think the cap that he can get is a thousand dollars but it'll be somewhere between five hundred thousand dollars where we at the last meeting authorized the purchase of the um, 30 yard roll off container he has all the matching funds available you know uh, for the grant applications he'd like to submit this and if he receives the money um, you know, we'll be back and just having you folks uh, vote to accept the funds. Okay, um, most uh, the intention of the board. Go for it. It's free money. Yeah, let's go for it. All right, you want to read the motion? I move to authorize the Solid Waste Department to submit a grant application to the NH the Beautiful for the purchase of a 30-yard roll-off container. Moved by Mr. Schaefer. Second. Seconded by Mr. Bork. Discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Abstain? Motion carries 400. He does his homework, huh? That's good for him. That is a good guy. That's a very clean ship, Tom. Okay. Off we go into the wild blue yonder. <laughs> Mr. Brown, administrator report. Okay. Uh, the last meeting we had a discussion on Mel's liquor license. We we're um, talking about trying to get the extended service area. And um, after the meeting, I contacted the liquor commission. They informed me that what they needed was just someone, a, a town official, to uh, authorize the extension of the service area. Then I learned that in the past, for all the events um, that's, that's gone on down at Mel's, uh, the police chief and the building inspector have actually um, submitted correspondence to the liquor commission about extending, you know, um, the um, service area. So um, they have already gone off and, and done that letter last week. So they're all set. I sent a cold red uh, message out today, just notifying residents that Penachuk, the, the paving project for all the um, streets that um, had the water mains installed this summer uh, the, the finished pavement will be going down uh, they're starting to work tomorrow so you know about half the streets will be uh, getting the, the uh, finished pavement the other half will uh, be getting the pavement in the spring we m mentioned uh, you're aware that we had a, a sinkhole at the bottom of Temple Drive and Jack uh, quickly mobilized a, a private contractor to excavate, uh, to investigate what was going on. I think we had to trench down 12, 15 feet, um, use the, uh, what do they call them, the shoring box. Um, and anyhow, what they discovered was that at some point in time, someone damaged the um, stormwater pipe that was connected to the catch basin. And we think the only time that Jack can think of any work being done in that area would be something to do with the sewer line that runs down Temple. Um, it was not the water line project this, this spring because, you know, like I said, we were down a good 15 feet. Um, anyhow, what they had done was they must have punctured a hole in it. They took an old street sign, wrapped it around the top of it, bolted it, and somehow something let go and Does that's what pictures of this he has pictures of it <laughs> oh show. my god he had shown me this thing in this truck <laughs> so um that was it so we got un unfortunately you know we don't really see the bill yet but i'm sure it's going to be somewhere in the amount of seven to eight thousand dollars <laughs> what we did um but we only had we thought we were going to discover that the stormwater pipe was um you know deteriorated from that catch basin all the way to the river 
We only had to replace uh, a 20 foot section. Right. Right, good. Uh, let you know that I just, uh, the town clerk informed me today that the, uh, the clerk, the part time clerk that was just recently hired, um, maybe a, you know, three weeks ago, two weeks ago, uh, submitted her resignation today. She was offered a job over the weekend, and um, so she just informed us about that. So it didn't work out. And then I have notified, uh, submitted, or started the um, application process or notification process to replace the bookkeeper search. Um, and I advertise it as part time. I apologize. I've been told by a couple of board of selectmen that um, it was the, that the board had intended to keep this as a full-time position, and then would evaluate things based on applications. So, I think at this point, uh, where the advertisement's gone out, it's out there in the public. Um, the best thing to do is to review the applications, see what we find, and if we're not satisfied with the applicants. Um, come back to the board and have a discussion or I don't know uh, well now that we're missing someone in, in there couldn't especially uh, now with two part-time positions gone or with two positions gone would it not make sense to keep the one that we have full-time and have them like a pool person alternate them back and forth to help out in the town clerk's office. I think it should be one there, one there. Okay. Yeah. I, agree. I know we've had discussions in the separate. past about concerns. Two separate people gives you more flexibility. Okay. Mm. Um, but the separation of, uh, because because of the bookkeeping that's going on and just sure. the, the internal, you know, accounting. That's true too. Te I integrity of the, you know. Yep, yep, because um, you have two different I'm not saying that 100%, but I know I've, that's been no, discussed I, before. No, I, I, I see your point. And I see you, your point, gentlemen. So. Okay. Um, so I apologize for the miscommunication. I, I thought that's the, that's the direction we were going. Um, well, let's so see what we get in. And let's move. I, I, I agree with my compatriots that when you have something, you certainly I, I, I'm, keep it. There is enough work if. if um, I'm thinking we need to to um, reevaluate all of the work that needs to be done and maybe um, share it. It very well. <coughs> it very well could be a part-time position, but we were hoping to get more of an evaluation of the whole process before we actually post. It. Yeah, was the impression I had. Oh, okay. So that that way they, we could work through and see just exactly what we needed to have in those. And we could still do that. Okay. Yeah. No, no I, I think that we should. I, I think we should do that. I would, because I think I, that was my impression too, Troy. And, and, and I'm not one to, I mean, I don't mind efficiencies, but uh, certainly when you have a position, I. I'm not one, when there's enough work to go around, I'm not one to want to, uh, you know, give up a position. So. Okay. Anything else? That's all I have. Gentlemen, members of the board, Mr. Schaefer, do you have any? Nope. Nope. Mr. Bork, no? Nope. Mr. Perry? Um, the planning board met last week. Um, the workshop session for the master plan is going to start. I wish I put it down. I believe it's the next meeting. Okay. I don't remember. My mind is blank right now. But um, they accepted the fact that I will be the representative from. Oh, so nice of them. Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> and. Um, That's all. Okay. And I don't believe I have any, anything. So, uh, okay, then I will next. Do we have a need to meet next Monday? Do we have a lot of work to be doing on the 25th between the public hearing 
in the budget, or are we all set? Uh, I think I, I, I would think we're all set. We get the two biggest, the biggest departments. We get the three biggest departments. The biggest thing yeah. we have to do is we have to come up with the um, wages. employee wages. Yeah. Okay, so are we all set doing that the twenty fifth. Mm -hmm. Do we have that? Um, I want to talk to the board um, about it. Yeah. Okay. No, I, I know. I, yeah. that's, that's why, I mean, I'm saying do we have that? Are we ready to move forward with that? That if we had a meeting next week? I don't think I'd be ready next Monday. Like because everything's outside perfect. Outside of that, I don't know how much more we can get done. Okay. Because once we have that, we can rub a stamp probably. Right. Overlay everything. 90 percent. Yeah. Okay, so we'll meet okay. next meeting will be September twenty fifth, yeah. and at this time I would um, tell the members of the public that we are about to go into a non meeting and a non public session, um, and I'll just tell you to be under ninety one A three section two A compensation and RSA ninety one A three two C reputation. Um, so when we come out, all we will be doing is adjourning. So I want to thank everyone for watching, and uh, we will see you again on September 25th.